Welcome to the North America Regional Grand Finals of the Logitech McLaren G Challenge. North America hosts one of my all-time favorite racetracks, Circuit of the Americas, so I'm very excited to see how the finalists will do. This year I'm particularly excited as I will get to personally meet the regional champions. That's because the winners of each regional final will get a tour of McLaren Technology Center in 2021 and some coaching by me. They'll also be invited to an expenses paid trip to the Formula One British Grand Prix. Congratulations to all the competitors for making it this far out of thousands of participants. Good luck. None of you people can tell me the Roll with the lights down. Hand over my crown. Hand over my heart. I do this for my town. I do this for my crown. Real loud. My time. My time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Turning the track up. I'm never going back down. Hand over my heart. I do this for my town. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be in the world, morning, afternoon, or evening, the sun is about to set on the Logitech McLaren G Challenge for another year because we are going to be crowning tonight our fourth and final regional champion. My name is John Sargent. With me is Luke Crane. It feels like we've lived in this studio for the last month, Luke, and unfortunately, all good things, and this has been an excellent one so far. Definitely one of the uh, bright lights in my 2020. Sadly, it's going to come to a close after tonight, but we have three excellent races between now and then. Absolutely, you know, considering what's going on in the world to pull off this amazing event we've had now. This is the fourth right. week, uh, of course. It's been fantastic. It's really been exciting. And, you know, today, every race has been so competitive. Is today going to be the same? Absolutely for me. I feel like this is going to be the best of the bunch, actually. A uh, big, bold claim. But, yeah, again, as every show, I'm just excited to get on with it, to be honest with you. I, I love the reason that's a bold claim as well, because, frankly, the racing has just been so excellent in all of our other regions. I'm particularly excited for the circuits that we have today. I think we're going to see a lot of on-track action. It's going to be really exciting. There are lots of nice wide tracks that we'll talk to you guys about a little bit later on, and a very, very competitive field of drivers as well. But that's North America, and that's the three races we've got tonight. We also need to talk about the three regions that have already had their champions crowned. It feels like an age ago where we started with APAC and then of course moving uh, moving on from that after the European region and then we had LATAM as well. Very, very different stories that sort of panned out between them. We had, for example, Latin America where there's a clear winner who won all three races and then we had Europe and APAC where actually it really, really came down to the wire, possibly last lap, last corner kind of shenanigans as well. We've had it all. Absolutely. For previous competitions, we've had it where drivers just won out from race one, really. It's not been as, as closely contested as this year. This year has been absolutely unbelievable, John. You know, it's gone down to the final race every time we've been in the broadcast booths, which is brilliant for us, makes our job super, super easy. Uh, and again, I can't see that changing today. I think it's going to be a phenomenal end to what we've had for broadcast across four different regions around the world, all getting to represent their regions, which is huge. But yeah, it's just going to be a fantastic spectacle. And I feel like uh, the, the train is still going strong. It really is. And I, I think it's fair to touch on this as well to say that, look, it's 2020. We don't have that global grand final that we were all looking forward to. But when you consider that that's happened, it's absolutely incredible what the Logitech McLaren G Challenge has been able to put on. It hasn't put off any of the competitors. It certainly hasn't made the racing any more dull. If anything, it is absolutely stratospheric in terms of excitement that we've seen over the last four weeks. So I'm, I'm really, to say I'm pleased about how it came about and how things have gone is a massive understatement. I'm trying to find the words to express, but it really has been top notch all the way through. Well, people have been at home. They've uh, had a lot more time to spend at home due to the global pandemic. and. Mm -hmm. They've improved. They've put more time behind the, the rig, and it's very, very obvious to us. You know, it's been side by side action. You know, it's gone down to the wire in each race. You know, sometimes last year specifically, we did have champions before the final race had even happened, but that's not sure. been the case today. You know, we had a tie in Emea. You know, it's within two points of three drivers for last week's event as well. So, yeah, it's just been a phenomenal, phenomenal championship, and it's just good to see that the regions are growing. This opportunity that Logitech yes. are giving people, you know, and it's not just the young guns. You know, we've got people racing for the dads, which is fantastic for some. Like we're, so we're supporting them so much. Of course, yeah. We, yeah, love, yeah. we love the dads. 
but yeah, it's, you know, we've got the young guns, we've got, you know, the, the older gentleman, x Wolf, the oldest man in sim racing. Probably that, that record will never be broken, by the way. He's at 97 at this point. Something like Great. that. Great, we'll see him later <laughs> on today. But again, like I said, it's giving opportunities to anybody and everybody, and, you know, it's just... The regions are just getting so, so good, so, so competitive. And we were asked a question earlier, actually, what's been the most competitive region? I, I can't pinpoint it. Like, you know, times have been a little bit different, but competitive-wise, it's been fantastic. You're, you're absolutely right. Last year, we were talking about this off-camera, where you're actually able to pinpoint who's more competitive in what region, which regions are more competitive than the others. And then we see the drivers, not only in the quarterfinals, but the regional finals this year, and we go, Hang on a second, where there were gaps last year, there, there aren't really gaps anymore. Like, they're much, much smaller, and everyone is so unbelievably competitive. So we're really looking forward to seeing how this moves into next year as well. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We were talking about competitiveness and the opportunities that things like the Logitech McLaren G Challenge give to the drivers that are going to be racing for you today. And we've got a very special guest lined up who will be able to talk to us a little bit about some of those opportunities and how you grab them with both hands. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to everyone Nick Ottinger, the winner of the 2020 e NASCAR Racing Series. And I believe he's going to be joining us live now. Nick, uh, good afternoon. If I've got my time zones right where you are, how how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I appreciate you guys, you know, sending this invite and, you know, having this chat with you guys. This is a great opportunity to watch these guys battle it out for, you know, this grand final here. And I mean, it's a high pressure situation for him. And uh, I think it's fair to start from the beginning. Obviously, you, uh, massive congratulations on your series win. Uh, uh, wonderful payday against a ridiculous field of very very talented drivers as well and let's not take anything away from the countless hours and effort that you put in to rightfully be where you are now but where did it all begin what got you into sim racing in the first place it's very hard to i have to go back to you know what got me into racing in general before sim racing and you know at at an early age you know i had a you know not a heart defect when i was born but you know i had angioplasty and they had to do open heart surgery after a couple of months. So at that point, you know, it gave me an opportunity to really look at what I could do as far as physically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, racing, you know, I watched with my dad all, all the time, you know, on Sundays whenever they race and stuff. And they really caught my eye as far as what they could do, the, the raw speed of, you know, just going around a corner 200 miles an hour as close as it could to, you know, another car or the wall. And, you know, after I had my second open heart surgery, and I think it was 2008 is actually when I became, you know, a fan more so because I had the downtime to actually sim race. And at that point, I was actually racing with a good friend of mine. His name's Michael Connie and a, a competitor of mine as well. And, um, and one thing led to just, you know, racing on NASCAR 9 on the PS3 back then. And, you know, we got to talking and what we wanted to expand, you know, racing with each other. And the first thing was I racing. So, lo and behold, you know, going into, you know, sim racing, that's, that's how I got started. I mean, it was just, you know, a lot of downtime with, you know, a competitor of mine, Michael Connie, who's actually become a really good friend now. And, I mean, it's, you know, this, this sim racing, it builds, you know, a lot of, you know, friendships and stuff like that. So, I mean, just to be able to share, you know, how I got into the series and how I got into sim racing with him was actually really cool. Well, first of all, congratulations on winning, for me, one of the most hotly and, uh, uh, contested championships in the world of sim racing, if not in the world of motorsport. Uh, so yeah. well done to you on that smashing effort. But people may not realize that eNASCAR has been around for a long, long time, but it's obviously come into the light this year specifically because of what's going on around the world. And it's been a bit of a solo effort. And you've been one of the big dogs, one of the main guys for a long, long time now. But this year, it wasn't a solo effort. You were then, you know, partnered with a team, uh, William Byron Racing, which is fantastic. What were the different trials and tribulations of now not only, you know, representing yourself, but representing your team? Oh, well, I mean, it's, you know, you want to do the best you can for, you know, represent and appeal to, you know, someone like, you know, William Byron and stuff like that. But I mean, coming from, you know, being able to, being in a series nine years that I've been, I mean, it's such a, such a prestigious series to, to begin with and being able to actually get to the point was, you know, just a lot of, you know, staying up the mornings of like three or four in the morning, you know, almost think like you're back in the high school or something like that. And just staying up so late because you could, and then, you know, get up an hour or two you know, for school at back in the day. Well, now it's different. You got to, you know, now, now you have a job and stuff like that. 
years I racing and I mean you're putting all them hours into just really just honing your craft and I mean there's nothing nothing more satisfying than being able to put that you know that effort in and being rewarded for it well uh, what advice would you have for the competitors that are competing today in the Logitech McLaren G Challenge because look all of them want to get to a position where they're not only winning races, but hopefully, like yourself, they can make it a professional career and you've shown yeah. what is possible when someone's able to walk through that door. But they've still, they've got that step to take. What advice do you give that person? Well, I mean, don't shy away from any challenge you have personally. And, you know, and, and, you know in professional sim racing, you don't, you don't want to shy away from it. You want to embrace the challenge and, you know, see what is on the other side of the door. Cause, I mean, anything can anything can change i mean this year i was partnering with william byron and he's uh, a top dog in you know the cup series and someone who i really actually you know admire working with and you know friends with and it's you know you don't ever want to put your foot down so always yeah. you know don't shy away from the challenge and you know embrace it hone your again hone your craft be disciplined try you know try different things try different disciplines too that you know could adapt to you know, put you in different situations that you want to think of. All right, well, thank you so much, Nick, for joining us. Uh, some wonderful insight, not only for us and the viewers, but of course, some of the drivers and the racers that are going to be competing uh, today. So congratulations once again on your championship victory. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And we look forward to seeing more of you in the future. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, guys. I mean, uh, really excited, you know, to watch this event with all you guys have been putting on. So, I mean, it's very, very excited for these guys and see what they can do. Nick Ottinger, everybody, 2020 eNASCAR iRacing Series champion. Thank you for joining us once again. Uh, we now move into our North America event, and Luke, this is going to be fantastic. Uh, a quick note before we begin. Uh, unfortunately, one of our competitors, due to unforeseen circumstances, couldn't actually make the grid today, which is a real shame. It's Mr. Schumacher. Um, Mar Marquisa Goodwin wasn't able to attend, so we've got 11 drivers on the grid, uh, but we hope that we'll get to see more of his racing very soon because very, very fast competitor, and we want to see everyone here. Now, we're going to be moving into our first track very shortly, but just a quick reminder that just for getting to this stage, all of the competitors and all of the races that you're going to be seeing today are using an identical set of equipment equipment. All of them have been kitted out with a whole bunch of fantastic Logitech and Alienware gear. They're going to be on stream cam for the entire duration of the broadcast as well as while they're racing so that we can monitor them as well. They'll be using the Pro X wireless headset in addition to the Pro wireless mouse. And of course, uh, while driving, they'll be using the Logitech G923 alongside the G915 TKL. And all of the action is going to be played on our Alienware Aurora R9 gaming PCs alongside the delightful and beautiful 38-inch curved gaming monitor that they supply as well, which frankly, for racing, is absolutely superb. And to top it all off, they're going to be doing this on a PlaySeat Sensation Pro. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and check out our first track with Luke. Welcome to my own special little corner here in the studio. Cannot believe that they've given me my own corner again, trusting me with this. But first track then is Indianapolis GP. And if you didn't know, I've been there. I was there last year. And yes, I may have told that story a thousand times, but still a very special place to me in my heart. But here you go. We've got the overview pan here, but let's check out some actual action of a car going around this circuit. So as you can see, we're here. We've got the start finish straight here. Very, very long indeed. So this means that qualifying isn't going to be as vital as it would potentially be at somewhere maybe like Laguna Seca, for instance. Through turn one then, again, a very big pinch point as we head then towards turn two. You can grab a bit of curb there on the exit. As we come up towards three here, it's all about setting yourself up well here for corner number four. So if we just uh, pause it now. So there's a massive opening on the inside of the circuit here with an opportunity to make an overtake. But then there's a chicane just after this where it will pinch up. So you can lose a lot of time here if someone does make a move. So you've got to try and cover them off, but ultimately you've got to maximize your speed as we do indeed just push on here. Uh, so yeah, here we go, come through turn number four. Then you can see the chicane here. So it is, it is flat out through the chicane, but if you're side by side with someone, you can lose a lot of time. So you can see a lot of drivers here potentially getting side by side and then just backing out just to make sure that they don't lose too much time in terms of race. 15 minute races, sprint races, it's not a long time at all. Down the long back straight here, you can set yourself up for a potential overtake then down in towards seven. And then we have got eight, nine and 10, all very orthodox corners. What I mean by that is they're 90 degrees. It's, you know, right, left, right, left. Uh, very, very simple here. But again, you've got to maximize your exit speed here and not run out into the grass. Because if you run out to the grass there, you are toast. It is game over. And then we come into what would be, for me, the most important corner of this circuit.
Striker because it's so wide open on the inside here. And also, if you grab too much curb there, it will shove you off onto the grass on the exit if you're carrying too much speed. And there we go, up towards the final couple of corners here. A very unique circuit uh, as well at the end here because it goes towards the banked uh, corner here. Again, you've got to maximize your speed, but ultimately not go into the grass, not go into the barrier. And that is a, a lap of Indianapolis GP. But you've heard enough from me now. It's time to meet our drivers. I'm FPR Physique. My name is Erie Riley. I'm 24 years old, born and raised in USA, Georgia. My favorite track is the 24 hour Le Mans track. My favorite part of the track is the long straight. And if I win this series, I'm gonna be like, yes, let's get to there. Let's go. My name's Todd Asherson, Gamer Tags Roll Face, LFDY89. I'm 31 from the Hudson Valley, New York, United States. Next up is Smashing Apex, aka Christian Wiggins, who is a returning finalist from last year's G Challenge. His favorite driver is Michael Schumacher, and his advice to new drivers is that even if you can't do better, always tell yourself you need to do better and it will come to you. We think the seven time F1 champion would approve of that attitude. Hey everyone, this is Matteo Skeptura, aka Cone Dodger. I'm 27 years old from the United States of America. Uh, my favorite track is going to be Watkins Glen. It's just a phenomenal facility, great high speed, high commitment track, lots of good technical sections in there as well. Uh, Watkins Glen does also happen to be my hometown, so it might be a little bit of bias in there. Uh, I've been racing real cars for the past 10 years or so, haven't made too much headway there, so it'd be nice to kind of prove that I'm good at racing something at least. Hey guys, I'm Snipper Pig. I'm 18 and I'm from the United States. My favorite track is Spa. It's the, uh, the first track I ever really raced around, and I've just loved it ever since. I'd say my biggest achievement in sim racing has been uh, when I won my group's four hours of Le Mans in the uh, GT class. Hello, my name is Matt Hugenschmidt, aka Sauce. I am 36 years old from South Carolina in the United States. I've been sim racing since about 2014. I uh, started off with Gran Turismo and then moved mostly to Project Cars about two years ago. Marquise, aka Mr. Schumacher, qualified in our PC online heats. You might be surprised to hear that Mr. Schumacher told us his favorite driver isn't the retired F1 racer of the same name. It is, in fact, the Danish racing driver John Magnussen. Hi, my name is David Moore, aka XWolf1369, and I race for Team ACR. I am 51 years old, yes, 51, and I am from the United States of America. My favorite driver is Jim Clark, the ultimate gentleman racer, could win in any car class, and just an amazing, amazing driver. I, I wish I could have seen him race. FPR Shadon Woody qualified in our PC online heat. Hey, what's up guys, Sarvesh here. Uh, I'm racing under the gamer tag Sarv, um, and I'm 19 years old, uh, and I'm originally from India. Uh, my favorite track uh, by far has to be Fuji Speedway in Japan. I think that that track has a fantastic flow of corners and the elevation change and the blind apexes, especially in sector three, make it a really, really fun drive in my opinion. Hello, I'm Max A. Power. Uh, my actual name is Max Bauman. I'm 31 and I'm representing the USA. I really want to win the G Challenge because I enjoy sim racing so much. I'm really getting into it. I'm really putting the time in when I can, even though I can't put as much time as I want. To put it all together for a win, I'd be ecstatic, absolutely ecstatic. Hi, I'm Z1 and only, aka Mike. I'm 48 years old and I'm from the US. My favorite professional driver is Mario Andretti because he could drive anything and win. I want to win the McLaren G Challenge because it would be awesome to get instruction from a professional racing driver. Welcome to the Indianapolis GP circuit. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in qualifying for the first of our three races this evening. Uh, just a reminder of the format that you're all gonna be seeing tonight. We have a 10 minute qualifying session followed by a 15 minute race. And at the end of the qualifying session, the hot lap that the drivers are on, they will be allowed to complete. Similarly, at the end of the 15 minute race, the next time the race leader crosses the start finish line, uh, that is when the race will end after the 15 minute time has elapsed. Welcome to race number one. I'm John Sargent. With me is Luke Crane. And six and a half minutes left to go. 
but I'm really, really looking forward to tonight's race. Absolutely. We've spoken enough rubbish now. It's about the racing action. We're in qualifying for race number one, and it is, for me, the favourite of this competition. If it all goes well, uh, Christian Wiggins, he's going to be looking good to win this championship, that's for sure, and he has put in an unbelievable time. A 122.940 as a banker time is just ridiculous. So that's a very good start then from him. Uh, and then we have got Matt Hugenschmidt, who is second position. 1.2 seconds off the pace then. Uh, we've then got David Moore, ex-Wolf, the oldest man in sim racing, currently in third position, 1.3 seconds off of the pace. They're all still out on circuit. Operator, uh, indeed, or Christian Wiggins. It's going to be difficult for me. I'm going to I've been calling them the gamer tags for about three years. So <laughs> to go to their full names is going to be ridiculous for me. But we're going to give it a good go anyway. Uh, then we've got Matteo Scaptura, Cone Dodger, who is in fourth position. 1.6 seconds off the pace, but it is Operator that is, well, just absolutely smashing it right now, although Erie, Riley has just put himself up into P2, seeing a few FPR fans in the chat as well. Uh, welcome aboard to the stream. Hopefully you all do enjoy it. Next up then, Max Bowman is in sixth position. We've then got Evan Quinn in seventh spot. We've then got Savash Han in eighth position. Z1 and only is, uh, well, Z1 and only just gone up to seventh position, so he's just improved on his time there. Beautiful work from him. Uh, we've then got Ryan Woodrow in 10th position, and then we have got Tom Aitchison, who is in 11th spot here. So right now, it's pretty close from second down around to around about sixth position, but it is Christian Wiggins who leads the way. Um, by a very, very big margin as well. I think we might have seen this in one of the European races, uh, Luke, if I remember correctly, where one of the drivers, I forget which race it was, their banker time ended up being the time that set pole position because they just happened to line everything up right. And it's such a good feeling when that very first lap is the one that nails it. I don't want to jinx myself, though, because if Christian comes out and then does a lap that's another couple of tenths faster than this, and that really was just a banker, this is this is going to be an amazing race for him. Yeah, if anyone can indeed improve on that time, it is Operator. He is, uh, again, just a huge level. We've been seeing over the past few years that Europe have kind of been the real top dogs in terms of pace, in terms of time, sure. in terms of uh, just the, the pedigree of the drivers as a collective. Um, but Operator is one of those drivers that is right up at that level as well, um, living in North America, hence why he was uh, at the World Final last year. Like, this guy just just wins. That's this, it's in his DNA. And let's talk a little bit about uh, the Indianapolis GP track as well. You were mentioning earlier, yes, there are a lot of fairly regulation standard 90 degree left, 90 degree rights and stuff like that. But rather than, because look, the, the phrase Mickey Mouse gets banded about when it comes to Indianapolis GP. But the way I see it, it just means that instead of fighting for 97% versus 100% in terms of efficiency, you're looking at 99.5 versus 100% and suddenly you're splitting hairs because even though the technical layout of the circuit might be more simple, that just makes it all the more important to squeeze that extra half a ten, for example, out of the more technical sector uh, sections like in sector three. Absolutely, could not agree with you more there. Fifth up to second position is just over a tenth of a second. So yeah, your point there is huge for these drivers specifically. But to find six tenths of a second at this stage is uh, nigh on impossible here. As David Moore comes across the line, three minutes still to go. So plenty of time uh, here for them to improve in the time. But again, you know, apart from you know, Christian Wiggins being six tenths clear here, it is very, very close to that competitive nature that we've seen across the previous three championships here is continuing. This gap that we see at the moment between uh, Christian and the rest of the field, Luke, is, is this something that you see Christian being able to maintain? Or are we, are we in a position where we can say, actually, let's just take a breather. Christian had a mega first lap, a mega banker time, which is effectively an almost pole. But everyone else just needs to get out for their second lap, and we're going to see that gap decrease. Is that what we can expect to see in the last couple of minutes of qualifying? Um, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be giving everything. They've all put their banker times in now. Uh, a few people are going to be happy. A few people are going to be unhappy. That's the nature yeah. of qualifying. You know, this is pressure. Ten minutes is not a long amount of time. But again, it's one of those things where you... It's not like a race where, you know, if you make a mistake in qualifying, you know, in a race you're done. But in qualifying, you're not. So you get that car, although it is a very long pit lane here. It takes a day and an age to get out the pits here. And actually, if we look here, uh, it looks like uh, Todd Aitchison is coming out the pits. And I'm not too sure he might just about be good enough to get across the line to get another lap. Because he's got to do his, complete his outlap first. And, but actually, he's up into P2 here, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Woodrow then up into P3. And all of a sudden, then, Erie Riley is in P4. I've got David Moore then, who's just about to come across the line, actually. Seven and a half tenths off. Needs to find a couple of tenths to move up. And unfortunately, not able to do so. But again, he will have two more laps to go here. And he's one of the only drivers that have not come in for a fresh set of rubber. Overheating around a circuit like this is huge as well. So, well, 
wonder whether that might be a little bit of an oversight here. But again, it is Christian Wiggins that right now is the big dog. He is coming back out for another lap, actually, by the looks of things. I thought he might be done, but he's not. And compared to some of our other regions, uh, like Europe, where we had tracks like Azure in the mix, we have to talk about how open these North American tracks are. Does this mean, in your eyes, that pole position is slightly less important or isn't the be-all and end-all? Or is this actually the most important couple of minutes that we're going to see on this race? Um, Indianapolis, qualifying is always important. Of course, yeah. If, you, if, you, if you're pole position, you get a fly, flying start. No one can overtake you. It's very, you always very want simple. to park it on the front row, yeah, of course. That, you know, that's everyone's objective. But in Indianapolis, yeah, I think uh, potentially it's not going to be that important. Watkins Glen, because of the nature of sector number one, it is yep. very important for me because, okay. um, you know, I think we might see a very messy start there. It's just the way the circuit runs. Um, but then when we get to Kota, that is a whole different commodity in itself. Right. So many different lines through turn number one. So it's a really wide entrance, but then there's a really strong pinch point on the exit. Um, but yeah, We've got those coming up. We're in Indianapolis right now. This is, for me, the best circuit maybe in the world for me, is personally. This is just my opinion. Don't shoot me down. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't want to see any threats on Twitter or anything like that. This is just my opinion. Um, but yeah, I think this place just promotes some really cool racing. Uh, and also, it's one of those circuits where slipstreaming is huge uh, on the star finish rate along the back straight. So if you're a couple of tenths off of the pace of the car in front of you, you can gain that back by just sticking in behind them. So uh, a lot of potential for cars to stay very, very close to each other through the entirety of the race, uh, assuming no mistakes there. At the moment, you can see uh, in pole position, Christian Wiggins, at least provisionally, four tenths ahead of the competition there, is operator with He's a 122.940 well. back into the pits. So the question is, can Todd Atchison or Ryan Woodrow try and do one better. They're currently second and third. Uh, I've no idea what Woodrow's doing. It looks like he's trying to warm his tires up for another lap, but the, the time's done. So, yeah, I'm not too Ooh. sure what he's trying to figure out. They may be trying to, f I don't know, actually. I've got, got no answer to that, unfortunately. Uh, Riley then is in the pits, then P4. Uh, shout out to Riley, my son, actually. What we're we'll, we'll, we'll watching right now. So, uh, yeah, hope you're enjoying the show, Riley. Uh, we've then got David Moore, who is coming up towards the final few corners here then. So he was, uh, at the world final last year as well so he's got pedigree again he is one of the oldest people in sim racing uh, that's a fact and actually he's done in qualifying here uh, but he keeps making finals so utilizing all of that experience uh, but p5 i think he might be a little bit unhappy with that um, and there's two surprises here for me uh, todd Aitchison and indeed woodrow being p2 and p3 that's not something that i would have predicted going into this and actually we've just seen a bit of an improvement here then by oh, todd wow. Aitchison. he's only two and a half tenths behind um yeah behind wiggins so wiggins Probably would have thought he would be a little bit further ahead than that with a 122.9, but ultimately it's not as far as what we thought it might be. So very good stuff indeed there from Aitchison. And well, could he be the surprise package today? So here's your qualifying result in race number one, ladies and gentlemen. Christian Wiggins on pole position alongside Todd Aitchison in second place. On row two of the grid, we have Ryan Woodrow and Erie Riley. Behind them, David Moore and Matteo Scaptura. And following them, Max Bormann and Matt Hugenschmidt. And then finally on row five to round out the top 10, we've got Savesh Han and Mike Lawson. And uh, I have to say, Atchison's not that far behind Wiggins. You were saying how slipstreaming is massive at Indianapolis and being a tenth or two behind means you can absolutely follow someone and potentially gain some of that time back, maybe even mount an overtaking maneuver on the long straights here. So a lot is possible from the front row of the grid. Yeah, Operator is 100% going to be hoping that he gets a, a fantastic start. He doesn't mind someone tucking in behind him, uh, indeed getting some slipstream. The problem is if he doesn't get off the line well and Aitchison's right next to him and they're side yeah. by side and then cars behind are then trying to pursue and push forward with the slipstream, that's where the issues are going to happen through turn number one. It's, as you can see here, it's such a long run up into towards turn number one. Uh, so anything can happen. Uh, you know, we have seen everything and anything this uh, season so far with all of our regional finals, and I'm sure we're going to see fireworks once again. So we're just waiting for them all to ready up here then for the first race of the North America finals of the Logitech McLaren G Challenge 2020, our final region to find our champion. And well, I am so, so excited here. It is poised beautifully well. A couple of surprises there at the top end of the grid as well. And that just goes to show the improvement. We've seen this time and time again. Every single week we have been doing these regional finals. We have seen surprises up near the sharp end of the grid. And ultimately, it just goes to show that people really are putting the time in. So here we go. 
nearly ready. Just waiting for them to ready up. There's my man there on the screen as well, just at the top, waving the flag from the scaffolding. Love a flag waver. <laughs> he's, about to, he's just about to wave the green flag here. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have got ourselves three red lights. There's all three of them gone. We're about to go green light racing here for the first race of the North America Logitech McLaren G Challenge Regional Finals. And I tell you what, Christopher Wiggins has got, sorry, Christopher, Christian Wiggins has got an unbelievable start here. Then down in towards turn number one. This is perfect for him. This is what he wanted to happen. And as he goes through there then, any potential late moves being made? No, no there isn't. So uh, everyone's going to get through pretty well. This is a bit of argy-bargy there. Cones going all over the place then. And actually Cone Dodger will be trying to dodge all of those cones here. That's what his, his specialty is uh, for sure. But it is indeed operator Christian Wiggins then. Favourite coming into this for sure. Who has had an unbelievable start. But look how close it is then at the back here. And Aitchison's dropped down a position already then. Ryan Woodrow has moved up into second spot. Yes, indeed. And Woodrow getting a decent start and moving uh, oh, around the oh, God. P2, P3, and that is huge. That is going to be Woodrow out pretty much of contention of winning this race. And, well, who takes advantage there is David Moore. Just missed the braking zone there. Uh, was Woodrow, no, sorry, not Woodrow. It was Aitchison. So Aitchison has made the mistake, and he's waiting. He is giving the position back there, but ultimately... You know, it's, it's, it's not great. You, know, you can give the position back or not, but they're now 10th and 11th position, and that for them in, in race one, which is vital, we've seen winners have, have over 20 points all three events here, so they have to get points in race one. That is huge. That is so frustrating for both of these drivers. Um, re respect for waiting and giving the place back, but like you say, 10th and 11th is going to do these guys no favors. And I, I have to say, when that was going on, it, all, it was one of those... Uh, one of those bits of contact that almost looked in slow motion to me, Luke, because the amount that the cars actually touched just felt so light. It really was the lightest of touches, but just enough for the, both cars to uh, lose traction there. So really unfortunate for them. But uh, the beneficiary, the chief beneficiary of this, is David Moore, who's now gone up into second position. He has. He is up to second position here. We've just uh, lost a driver here. It looks like he may have retired from this race, which is not ideal. Uh, we're on board then with Cone Dodger. And actually, we're going to go on board here with Savesh Han. He's been a big beneficiary of that situation as well. So he gets a very good exit and out of that chicane through five and six, down towards seven. A long run down towards seven here. And uh, can he potentially make a late move on the inside under braking? Again, he's just trying to get to the mirrors there, just trying to indeed get into the head of the driver in front of him and actually there was a bit of a missed apex there uh, by Matt Hugen Schmidt and you can see here he's a little bit erratic there and maybe the pressure is starting to pay off but this is brilliant for David Moore at this point because if these two fight it gives David an opportunity to drive away and again right now he's got about 1.7 seconds of advantage so they're not even in his slipstream at this point so this is brilliant for him he's just taken full advantage but the real winner if we're going to be honest is Chris, uh, Christian Wiggins who is just dominated from start yes. Uh, in qualifying, he's got the best start possible here. Again, Slipstream is a factor into turn number one, but it's not when you when you start like that, there's no factors about Slipstream. It's unbelievable. Exactly. And having the cars behind him uh, involved in a bit of contact as well is going to make it very, very difficult for anyone to catch him. Three seconds ahead of the field at the end of lap one, you can't have hoped for more than that after starting on pole position. And I love, by the way, that uh, Han is continuing to pressure Hugen Schmidt into sector three, trying to go for a move. And uh, is he pushing him out onto the grass? Not quite here. Big, big fight between these two drivers, and he's hanging it around the outside and keeping a hold of the position. What a move there by Savesh Han. And I'll tell you what, it takes two to tango as well there. So uh, Hugen Schmidt then, you know, really could have squeezed him a little bit more, decided against it. But Sa yeah, Savesh, fair play to him. He's up into P3 now. And actually, with a mistake there by Matt Hugen Schmidt, it's given an opportunity then for Han to just drive away. But again, it was turns one, two, three, side by side. Here comes no Captura. Oh, he might actually do it around the outside here as well. Look, Scott Tour trying to take advantage of the additional mistake from Hugen Schmidt, and he's through as well. That's two positions lost in as many sectors, uh, and that is not going to be good news for Hugen Schmidt. When you when you're in this kind of position, as horrible as it is, you can't get angry at the car in front. You have to reset. You have to play it calm. Get into the slipstream and try and get those positions back. Third to fifth. He's got nothing to be angry about. Nothing to be angry at, about at all. Their hand has just pulled off a beautiful move. There was no aggression to it. He just took the full advantage, got a slipstream into turn number one, made the inside run, uh, got covered off by Hugen Schmidt, and then he went, 
hand just went round the outside. He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll go round the outside if the inside doesn't work. It's a beautiful move from him. Uh, and I think what's really caught out Hugen Schmidt is when he run wide on the exit of the chicane, he had a slow down penalty. So that's put him under a lot of pressure here and actually he's losing another position here as well as Evan Quinn moves up into a top five. And again, we have seen that, you know, fifth, fourth, third positions are absolutely vital if you want to win these championships. If it doesn't just, you know, we don't have a winner every single race. You know, it's been close every single week. You know, making overtakes early in this championship is huge. Well, those times were so close in qualifying as well, so we know how bunched up third through eighth basically is uh, in this field. So really, really big stuff there, and Hugen Schmidt has now got it all to do. Now about 10 seconds off the pace. Han, Savesh Han, made an overtake on a previous lap, right? Yep. He's only a tenth of a second slower on the previous lap than David Moore, even with making an overtake through turns one, turns two, turns three. That would have lost him maybe eight tenths of a second, maybe a second here. So Savash Han right now has got some serious pace, and David Moore is going to be looking in his mirrors very, very quickly indeed. Uh, I also love, by the way, the uh, racecraft that we said uh, that we were looking at from Savesh Han because we were mentioning how he was filling the mirrors. If you're going to fill the mirrors of the car in front, the best place to do that on this circuit is going into sector three. You want to promote those mistakes coming onto the long back straight so that you have that opportunity to overtake. So the fact that Savesh was doing that in Matt Hugh Schmidt's mirrors coming into sector three, absolutely the correct place to be doing that. Absolutely spot on there, John. Uh, great analysis, actually, as we head then onto the back straight that you were just talking about. And, well, Hugen Schmidt has just made that tiny little error, run a little bit far too wide, and he had to just get off the gas. And otherwise, he would have hit the wall, and then you get damage, and then you're kind of done for. And there's a mistake Oh, then. no. Oh, that's not ideal there at all. Big, big mistake. And Hugen Schmidt then and Quinn have been involved in this. And, well, you can see the Quinn. Quinn is, uh, is struggling just as much as Hugo's bit here. And like you said earlier, you know, if you make a mistake in these races, you have to have the mental prowess to just get out of your system. It's a short 15 minute race. You haven't got an hour to think about this. You've got to, you know, you've got to maximize every single position, every single second of a race here. And Hugo Schmidt really is driving on tilt at this point. Speaking of maximizing, uh, it's worth pointing out that Ryan Woodrow is back up to eighth position and is only a couple of tenths behind seventh as well. So the consolation drive, trying to get back in the points, trying to rescue every single possible point here uh, is very much on for Woodrow. Is he going to get into the top three in this race? No, but it's very important to have a mature recovery drive like we've seen in some of the other regions already. Absolutely. You know, he's shown some serious pace in qualifying and at the start of this race. So he knows he's got the pedigree. He knows he could potentially mix it with the big dogs in this championship here. So again, recovery is huge. And he's literally the opposite effect. He's been involved in something massive during this race, but he's got to have a system early. He's now making his way through the pack here beautifully well. So Ryan Woodrow smashing it as it stands. And he's got a couple of cars in front of him here. So he could really work a couple of spots then actually it's three cars so potentially if he's going to show the pace he's shown in qualifying at the start of this race he might be able to get up to that top five maybe top six might be the maximum but i don't know it's going to be close here it's actually we've got to move here potentially as cone dodger is uh being overtaken there oh no sorry cone dodger's caught up to hand yeah so hand holds on to the position he's made a mistake here yeah because he was only one and a half seconds behind more now he's four seconds back so he's made a mistake here and all of a sudden cone dodger is involved here as well and we're talking about competitiveness we are seeing this throughout the field that's very surprising, actually, coming out from Han, considering the first couple of laps on how uh, composed he was in the racing. So uh, showing a couple of cracks in the armor, and uh, Scartura absolutely trying to take advantage here. Two drivers that are actually fairly lonely at the moment, though. The top two, we're not giving them that much airtime because there's not much going around around them because Christian Wiggins and David Moore have several seconds of clean air either side of them, leading the race six seconds behind, and then third place, a full 10 seconds behind. So top two places here, they just have to focus on not making a mistake. They will not care about getting camera time one bit right oh, now. No. P1, P2, yeah, make, make your moves, get it done. It's all good here as well. Savage Han makes another mistake here as they come through the final sector. Got a couple of corners to go here. Six minutes, 30 seconds to go. So we're nearly two thirds of the way through this race. And Savage Han defended that really well there. He made a mistake, got a bit too much curb as well. Lit the rears up, and well, he's just about holding on to P3. And Cone Dodger not going for that slipstream here, needs to get underneath that rear wing, has to maximize this straight as they've come across the bricks. Then, as you can see in the background, he needs, if he wants to make an overtake, has to get it done early, otherwise, he's going to lose so much time here. As we've got Hugen Schmidt then potentially trying to make a move actually on, on Woodrow. Yes, Woodrow has made a move up into he was in P6 then momentarily, so he's gone from eight to six. But there's a mistake then by Hugen Schmidt. Can Hugen Schmidt hold on? And Hugen Schmidt, we're literally seeing the two 
opposites of what we're talking about here. Yeah. Mistakes happening early in this race. Hugo Schmidt's going backwards from it, and Woodrow's got out of his system and he's moving forward. So yeah, we're literally seeing the two differences here. And now here we go, we go side by side, down, out of that chicane, down the back straight here. And I tell you what, I think Woodrow is gonna nail this position now. He's got the inside yeah. line, and just in behind them then, you've indeed got uh, Max Bowman as well. So Bowman trying to make a move uh, as well, trying to follow him through. I tell you what, it's not done here at all. So Woodrow being put on all sorts under, under all sorts of pressure here from uh, Hugen Schmidt. So it's not done and dusted for Hugen Schmidt, that's for sure, he is fighting. That move, absolutely fantastic stuff by uh, Woodrow, getting a really, really good line out of the chicane. However, Hugen Schmidt might be coming back, going on to the main start finish straight. We've also got Skaptura here, fighting again for the podium position, putting all sorts of pressure onto Han. Han was the one putting pressure on other drivers, and now we're seeing, rather than settling into a rhythm, he seems to be uh, focused on his mirrors, I have to say, because Skaptura is all over his exhaust. But the key parts of the circuit here, although Han's made a big mistake, the key parts of the circuit he's nailing, the exit onto the onto the start finish straight here you know the exit uh, through the chicane onto the back straight as well although he's gone defensive there that's a mistake from me he had no need to go defensive there at all Skaptura was nowhere near close enough to set one up the inside and uh, he lost a bit of time there and actually ultimately on the defense side of things here they both did uh, let's go back then on the Bauman versus Hugen Schmidt uh, there and behind Woodrow as well and actually Woodrow Again, what, what a race he's had here. Again, he's going to be so annoyed with how it went down early in this race, but he has recovered so, so well. Woodrow two seconds behind Evan Quinn, the next car up on track in P5. And if Woodrow is able to overcome that obstacle, then he will be back up into a P5 position, considering that they were last positions on the grid uh, at the end of lap one. Woodrow will be pleased with that. Uh, about 1.7 seconds now left to close and only four minutes left in the race. So it's possible to close up. Will an overtake be on the cards, though, is another question entirely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it all depends what Woodrow's time is on the next lap. So he's uh, obviously been held up over the last previous laps due to just the nature of racing. He's been overtaking side by side and not being able to take the optimum line through the corner. So we'll just stay on board with Woodrow here uh, very quickly. Let's have a quick look, though, at Scaptura to see if he's close enough to Savash Han. He's not. So again, back on towards Woodrow then. I just want to see lap times here. Again, he's not close enough to make a move. We've got three minutes 20 or three minutes 30 seconds to go here. So we're looking at three laps remaining in this race. And what lap time is he producing here? Across the line he goes then. And it's a 25-2 for Quinn. So Quinn is actually just hit his best lap of the race here at the right time because Woodrow's only two tenths of a second quicker, which is not going to be good enough over three laps. So now it is it, Woodrow's got to throw everything at this. I know it's, it's the first race and we were talking about earlier this championship that, you know, you've just got to settle yourself in. But the way he's got this pace, the pace he has, he has to utilize this now. Speaking of pace, we do have to talk about this. I, I, I find it unbelievable that Christian Wiggins is more than a, la a second a lap ahead of the entire field and has maintained it throughout the course of this race. I feel like Wiggins is really putting the boot down and saying, this is the benchmark you've got to beat. I intend on winning all three races here. We have to talk about it because of the gap between him and everybody else. Well, I'm the one person in the world that's not shocked. He is Fair. just that good. Like. It yeah, he coming into this for me, he was the, the real hot favorite. And the only thing that was going to beat him uh, around Indianapolis specifically, this is actually the track, ironically, that he qualified on. Uh, the first week of qualifiers and time trials, this was the track he qualified on. So you can see why. In, yeah, he's putting so much time here. The fact that he's lapping in well, a 123.8, two uh, laps in a row, tires are going to be absolutely screaming at this point of the race. Like he is just in a different level. But. We're not at Indianapolis GP for all three races. We're only here for one race, so exactly. this is good for him on here, but what about race two and race three? One thing to point out here is that it's very, very important, or was very important for Scapura to try and get ahead of Han there, because I believe Scaptura has got a penalty uh, to apply, uh, being applied to his time at the end of the race. Is that? No, sorry, that would have been lit up in red. What's, that go what's going on there? Because I'm really worried that Quinn is going to be able to close up to within striking distance of Scaptura. Yeah, don't give away all of my tricks of how I do the cameras, John. That's telling me that they're really close racing. Oh, is that all yeah, it is? Oh, yeah. oh, well, we knew that two laps ago. Yeah, it's not my brain doing all of the uh, figuring <laughs> out here. It's the game. <laughs> um, but yeah, going back to Operator, you know, he is one of the very best in the world, not just in the region, uh, on Project Cars 2. So yeah, to see him uh, perform here, well, I think it might be a bit closer over the next two uh, tracks. He's just specifically good at this one, like re really top level good at this one. Um, but here we go, Battle for P3 is pretty close here. Bauman is in behind Hugen Schmidt here as well. One minute to go, so one more lap remains of this race. I think, yes, the operator is about to come across the line. And well, how close is it between Han and? No, it's not not close enough for P3 at all no. here. So let's give operator a little bit of camera time here, and he is setting a statement here, isn't he? It, 
it's really interesting how this race has unfolded, Luke. I feel like in most of the other races, in most of the other regions, we've seen scrappy or inconsistent or really exciting first couple of laps, and then the drivers tend to settle into a little bit of a rhythm, and we go, okay, this is what's happening now. In this particular race, yes. For Christian Wiggins, THR operator, fine. For almost everyone else, it's been up and down like a yo-yo the entire time. Scaptura has now fallen back from hand. We could have sworn that two or three laps ago an overtake was on the cards. Doesn't look like it. And now Scaptura has to be watching out for Quinn. And how about Woodrow as well? Everyone has been up and down. It, there's no real rhythm. It doesn't feel like there has been anyway, at least if your name isn't Christian Wiggins. A lot of things have happened here. It's not been a procession in terms of the whole field. Um, obviously, it's been a procession here for Christian Wiggins. But I want to talk about David Moore, currently second. Yes. Someone who suffers with nerves quite big within sim racing. It no, doesn't look like it. Well, no, of course. You know, he's not gifted the opportunity. He made an overtake for P4 early, but he's managed to get himself up into P2 because of the incident that happened between P3 and P4. Sure. But his lap times haven't been outstanding apart from the last couple of laps. So I feel like all of those nerves that have been built up are starting to shake off. So watch out for him in the next couple of races. That's going to be very, very big, especially on uh, uh, qualifying for Watkins Glen. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. It is the first winner then of our North America regional finals for the Logitech McLaren G Challenge. And it's going to be the big dog, the THR operator, Christian Wiggins, picks up the win. And is that the first part then of a triple threat from THR? Because they've already won two regional finals. Yes. And this could be potentially a hat trick. As you can see in the background then, we've got David Moore flashing his lights there. Uh, great stuff from him. Took full advantage of what happened before him. And well, Savage Han, who made an unbelievable overtake, a few mistakes as well. But again, if there's any nerves of him, he's blown those cobwebs out as well. But actually top three. It's all about Christian Wiggins. He has been an absolute superstar in race number one. And well, will he continue that form into race two and race three? <laughs> I feel like uh, Savage Han and uh, Skaptura, maybe if they had any sort of nerves or anything like that to begin with, their scrap that lasted about half the race will certainly have shaken the cobwebs off there. So that is the end of race number one. And here are your provisional results, ladies and gentlemen. Christian Wiggins uh, provisionally winning that race. And then David Moore in second. We've got Savage Han completing the podium. And right behind him, it's Matteo Skaptura. Evan Quinn and Ryan Woodrow will finish fifth and sixth, just ahead of Max Bowman and Mike Lawson. Todd Atchison and Mac Hugenschmidt will be ninth and tenth. And in 11th place, we've got Erie Riley, who was doing so well initially. I'm not 100% sure what happened there, but I'll be looking forward to seeing how they intend to move up the field as we go into race number two. So that was a very eventful first race, I have to say, considering that we had a lights to flag leader who won the race. I think it's fairly clear that they weren't involved in anything and we're fairly confident in that. Beautiful lap times, a second ahead of the rest of the field, but behind Christian Wiggins, it really was all kicking off and it was evolving the entire race long. Yeah, the competitive nature of all of our regions and now we're seeing it here again in North America. Just goes to show that, you know, with the opportunities that Logitech keep putting on each and every year, uh, it's just, pr you know, providing a bigger pool of talent. Of, you know, they're getting better, they're getting faster. Yeah. Um, they're not getting younger if you're if you're ex-Wolf, that's for sure. But yeah, ultimately, it just goes to show how strong each region is. But ultimately, it is about Christian Wiggins. What a performance it was from him. Again, very dominant. He did qualify at this circuit. I would imagine it is his favorite one out of the three. So again, not all hope is lost, ladies and gentlemen, watching at home. But we, we, we could see in race two and race three some very different results. But yeah, the day belongs to him so far. It really does. And uh, that, that was a dominant performance as well in terms of qualifying, in terms of fastest laps in the race, and uh, an over 10 second victory as well in that race. Uh, we're going to have the official results as opposed to the provisional results given to you guys in just a bit. But in the meantime, time also a massive thank you uh, to our PC and display partner Alienware the 38 inch gaming monitor of course the curve gaming monitor being used by all of the competitors today in this regional final for North America we're going to go to a quick break finalize the results and come back and introduce the next track to you so go ahead and grab yourselves a drink but maybe don't go for too long because Watkins Glen is coming up next
Welcome back to the Logitech McLaren G Challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, race number one is in the history books, but we've got two more races to go. And as you can see on my right-hand side are your left, Christian Wiggins, with a 123.560 as a best lap. Wins that race comfortably. Ten points, but I just want to point out the difference between that lap time and that lap time. Oh, my God. Second place to David Moore. Let's not take it away. Brilliant overtake to get into that position after, of course, taking advantage of the contact in front of him. But a 124.48, that is a massive difference, Luke. And I appreciate that Wiggins might be a little bit of an indie specialist, but I'm looking at that going, is this ominous? Is this a triple race victory? That's what I have to be thinking at that point. Yeah, but in qualifying, it was only two tenths. So, yeah. <laughs> Very true. So that I wouldn't worry about it too much. Again, Woo! Indianapolis is Christian Wiggins, like, I don't know, must go there and visit and, and pray or something. He's like his favorite place in the world by the, the way he's qualified and, and the way he has indeed uh, gone through. Yes. And in terms of racecraft as well in that race, we have to talk about Savage Han. I feel like the uh, the battle between Han and Skaptura was the, the, the battle that was almost raging for longest and the, uh, very, very impressive from them. And also the recovery drive from Ryan Woodrow. Yeah, but look at his time. So his, you're talking about lap times. He's only half a second off. Again, yes. sixth position is going to feel horrendous, but ultimately it should feel like a win considering the position he was in. So watch out for that driver there. He's going to be, I don't know, he's going to be a spanner in the works. So I'm pretty sure of it. Really looking forward to seeing what they can bring here uh, to race number two. One more question, I guess, to take a look on here. We've got uh, the next best lap time, of course, Woodrow in sixth place, a 124.0 flat. Qualifying was a lot closer than this, but the consistency in the race from Christian Wiggins was scary because 0.2 seconds difference in qualifying, fine. That translated to an 11 second victory, Luke. Margins that small don't result in race victories that large. The consistency when he's at the sharp end is scary. Yeah, absolutely. He is a stand that has been for quite a long time as well. It's not just something that's happened overnight. That is for certain. He's put in plenty of time. Uh, you know, he's one of the very best, you know, not just in this region, but in the world. But again, Woodrow did that fastest lap with damage to the car as well. So just, Ooh, it's not yes, all lost. Right. I'm telling you, it's not all lost. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a good, good next couple of races. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see a fantastic firework filled show. Right, well, we're looking forward to hopping into Watkins Glen now. But uh, first of all, just a quick reminder to everyone that everyone is racing on identical equipment today. Uh, so for all three of the races, all of the drivers that you see here will be on the stream cam to us, of course, and to the stewards and stuff like that as well. But they'll be using the Pro X wireless headset. They've got the Pro wireless mouse, and they will be using both the Logitech G15 TKL and the Logitech G923 racing wheel. And all of this is powered on the Alienware Aurora R9 beast of a gaming PC accompanied by the Alienware 38 curved gaming monitor and they get to experience all of this and feel every bit of feedback from their equipment through the PlaySeat Sensation Pro. But that's enough about the competitors and their equipment because they're going to be using it on Watkins Glen. So Luke, take it away with our next track. Well, here we are, then, ladies and gentlemen. It is Watkins Glen, and on the surface, it looks a very simple circuit indeed, but it's not. It is a cruel mistress. And, well, you can see the overview pan here. It is a beautiful, beautiful circuit. It's fast, it's frantic, but it's so much technicality that you just need to scratch underneath that surface. Beautiful bit of work. Anyway, let's head in to see a car go around this circuit, and I can try and talk you for a few points here. As you can see, there's a big crest then over the start-finish line, but into turn number one. We just pause it here. Look at the camber of this corner here. If you make a mistake there, you're going to run off really far wide, and we just go on a little a bit further he can see the curb on the exit there uh, again if you run off with all four wheels you are done for the most important part of this circuit here is got to be turns th uh, two three and indeed four here it is flat out through here if we just pause it and there well <laughs> that's the worst position to be paused possible that's for sure look at that uh, but here we go if you do you can go through that uh, flat out but again you have to maximize your entrance if you don't you have to let off the gas otherwise you're into that wall and again damage is huge when it comes to these races being only 15 minutes long here we go along the big uh, i guess it's not really the back straight but uh, out of turn number three and this is a big slipstream zone coming up towards the bus stop chicane here so if we just pause it when it gets to the braking zone and we should just see the curbing on the inside so there we go you can see there in the vt that the curb is being used hugely here and you can on the entrance and the exit you can use a lot of curb here uh, but as we come through the bus stop you've got to set yourself up though on the exit here because then there's a corner that just drops away from you so you've got to use the camber of the corner to turn your car around uh, and again 
it's just losing so much time there if you do not have the optimum line. So you're going to see people come out of the bus stop chicane side by side. And, you know, ultimately, it's going to be opportunities for people behind to make overtakes. And then we head into the back end of this circuit through sector number two here. And then we have got a hairpin. Uh, but again, you've got to utilize the camber of this corner here. So again, if we just pause it on the exit, you can see it's uphill. So again, you can get on the power nice and early, but it's vital that you do not spin the wheels up. You've also got to be very, very careful that someone doesn't get the run on you around the outside here. And if they do get the run on you around the outside, you've got so little track to work with on the exit. The pinch point is massive. So here we go. We just roll on to the next part here. Uh, and again, not a many corners to go here, but just again, it's so many corners. You've got to maximize your speed on exits. It's just uh, a, a sort of North America way of doing things. Uh, here we go then, heading in towards the final sector here then at Watkins Glen. Uh, and again, it's another uphill sector of the course before we come in towards the final few corners. And again, there's a lot of runoff on the exits here, but this one specifically, there's a wall. Uh, you don't want to be going into that wall. That will be race over for you. Uh, and then we've got the final two corners to go here. Very unique corner, this one here, because you do have the runoff, but you will get a penalty if you run off. And if you do indeed get onto that curb, it will drag you all the way off. Then you've got the final corner here, the exit again. Look how wide that curbing is. You can use it all, uh, but then we come across the start finish line oh god so frantic is the race going to be as crazy as what i've just tried to come up with there absolute rubbish but luckily you've got lando doing the next one he knows a thing or two about racing but anyway we're heading to qualifying for race number two thank you very much luke and we are now in watkins glen for qualifying lots of undulating bits and bobs to the circuit and the question on my mind to be honest is Will Christian Wiggins be able to take pole position for a second race in a row? Uh, obviously, extremely talented and arguably the favorite to take the entire championship. But like you said, Luke, it's a different circuit. And qualifying at Indy, even though it was maybe Wiggins' pet circuit, just over two tenths. So anything can happen here. I'll tell you what, you've asked a question, but we're going to find out the answer within seven minutes. So, yeah, there you go. You That's a very long-winded answer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or, or, or a short <laughs> answer in terms of motorsport, I would say. Uh, but, yeah, we've got six minutes then, 50 seconds left on the clock, and we are on board with Pole Sitter from race number one. So let's just stay on board with him then uh, for the entirety of this lap and just see what sort of bank of time he put in. Again, his first lap time was the fastest lap time last time out, so he was not messing around whatsoever. So if there was any nerves, they were blown out the water very quickly in Indeed. So again, up in towards the final couple of corners here. Again, see how close he gets to the wall on the exit. Oh, he's flirting there, that's for sure. Two corners then remain. And there will be a couple of people actually putting a lap time in first before him here, which was not the case at uh, Indianapolis. He got straight out early doors. So around the final corner then again, using all of that curbing on the exit. And actually, quite reserved there, to be fair. And Max Bowman is the quickest, and he just gets it taken away from him very, very quickly. And, uh, well, there we go. Christian Wiggins, a full second up ahead then of Whoa. David Moore. And actually, no, it's Erie Riley. So Riley moves up onto the front row of the grid here with Operator, again, with a commanding qualifying here. But turns one, turns two, and turns three are so, so vital here, and anything can go down. Erie Riley. Maybe something to prove there, because uh, in the provisional standings that we saw previously, 11th place, obviously, uh, not ideal in race number one, and Riley will be very, very keen to get that car onto the front row of the grid and really show what he is capable of. But I have to say, just shy of a second, slower than the banker time set by Wiggins there. That is, oh, are we going to see this for a second race in a row? That is a huge gap. He seems to be able to string these banker laps together like they were the dying seconds of qualifying. Absolute nerves of steel. I'm expecting to see the times be as close as possible during Indianapolis and Watkins Glen. There are two circuits that a lot of these drivers would have done over the years within sim racing. They're in a yep. lot of games. Uh, but then you've got Kota, a very new circuit. Uh, so I'm expecting that one to be the one of, all about who's put the most time in, really. Because it is, again, such a new circuit within the world of motorsport and sim racing. But we're on board then with Riley here, who is just coming through the mid part of this circuit. And uh, who is anywhere closer here? Actually, we've got um, Todd Agenson then going through the bus stop chicane here. I guess uh, Operator will be one of the first to come through once again. He Woo! will be. Uh, and again, he's just flirting. Well, we've got a bit of a mistake there in front. Uh, and you can see just using a little bit of grass there on the entrance. It's very risky. It's high risk, high reward. But again, if you are Christian Wiggins and you can find a little bit of an advantage, you will find that advantage. It runs a little bit wide though through the final corner. That might be an invalidation here. Comes across the line. We will find out if it's an invalidation or not. Uh, in terms of uh, whether he goes faster or not. And he has not, so he's going to get some fresh rubber onto the car. Uh, David Moore then will be one of the next drivers to come through, I think. No, is he just start? No, he's through the mid part of the lap. And actually, it looks like he's tangled with something. 
He's got a damage. Yeah, yeah, he's got damage, damage front right there. So he would have come back into the pits to get that fixed, and this will be an outlap. Evan Quinn's just uh, invalidated his lap time. Well, here we go then. Ryan Woodrow has put in his bank of time. He's one second off the pace. But again, you know, just being up near the front is going to be huge for him and just hopes it's a nice clean start for him. Riley, the only driver to improve the time, getting into the 141s, and the only driver within a second of operator right now. So really impressive. Luke, you brought up several things that I want to ask about, but the, uh, the very interesting thing here, oh, that definitely was a little bit of a cut through the chicane there for Woodrow, but uh, he's, he's in P3 at the moment. Luke, I wanted to ask, you mentioned about two wheels on the grass. High risk, high reward for sure, because if you lose control, it's all gone. Uh, how do you, in, on most tracks, you take two wheels off the circuit. There's no way there's a better line through the, through the corner. Where are we looking at here, and why is that necessarily different? Um, it's just opening up the corner more. You know, if you go in, it's, just, it's mathematics more. It's just angles. So if you've got sure. a wider angle to work with, you can carry more speed through the apex. That's literally what it is. And if you can find places to take advantage of that, um, you know, in the real world of motorsport, you'll find obviously people won't do it because you'll get the same effect at every single corner. But within sim racing, there are certain areas where you can get away with it a little bit more than you can others. Certainly. Um, and, you know, ultimately, when you see you know, Formula One drivers, when you see NASCAR drivers, they try and get any advantage possible. It's very much the same within sim racing, that's for sure. Got it. And uh, speaking of every single advantage possible, most of the field have a second to make up now uh, on Christian Wiggins. Where are they most likely to find that time? Is it a case that it's fairly evenly distributed across the whole lap? Or how do they catch up and how do they get set a time that's as good, if not faster, than what Christian has laid down? Where are they finding it? Um, per, if they find Pandora's box, I guess. Down the like, back of the gonna, sofa. It's going to be magic at this point because, you know, it's not a case of of trying to catch an average time. A 141.178 is an unbelievable time. I cannot stress that enough. That is world level. So, you know, it's not a case of everyone uh, behind him slow. Like, that's just an exceptional time. A fantastic time, actually. Uh, but again, he's got to get that start. So he's nailed it, race one. Yep. But the start here is even more important. I can tell you that now. There's so much time to be lost if you go side by side for his turn one, two, and three. That's right, because you were talking about how uh, earlier, about how the entrance to turn one there's loads of different lines through it but it's basically a pinch point because as soon as you get to the exit there's more or less one fastest line so it's uh it, it, it's all about making sure that you get to the first corner first and from that point onwards you're relatively happy yeah as soon as you hit the, uh, the loud pedal the throttle out of turn one up towards the bus stop chicane is flat out if yep. you're on your own if you're side by side it isn't so you're going to lose so much time. So again, it's about getting off the line quickly. Uh, you know, Christian has absolutely smashed it in race number one. So I'm expecting to see pretty much the same in race number two. It doesn't seem like he's he's got nerves. He's, he's got veins full of ice, uh, as Christian Wiggins. He's done, he's done it last year, and he's doing it again this year. So it's good to see his consistency. Uh, I will tell you now, it is, a it is a lot closer than it was last year, that's for sure, in terms of the talent around him. And also, it's new names as well. So yeah, not to say that these drivers are doing a bad job. It's just that Christian Wiggins is doing a sensational job. And to be fair, these drivers are also improving. So uh, Riley did improve his time, of course, and Atchison managed to get up into P3. So also within a second now of operator, but still wanting to improve further. David Moore, who was in P2 earlier on, uh, just a second off the pace. But take a look at how close. Fourth place through seven. Are, for example. Yeah, they're really, really close. We saw this actually in qualifying one. David Moore actually qualified P5 in race number one as well. So he made an overtake into turn one, and then what happened with the, the craziness of, turn, of uh, lap one, uh, actually gifted in P2 again. Oh, he, Riley improves. Oh, he does indeed. It's a three, yeah, nearly four tenths of a second. So it's not quite a two and a half that we saw in race number one. But again, we are seeing these drivers just slowly improving. That bodes well for the race. You know, Christian has put his best time in. He's not improved since then, so he's not getting yeah. any faster. But these drivers, they're going faster in qualifying. So you can only say that in the race, they're going to continue that progress. And we saw it with Abraham. Abraham, again, we bring it back to the uh, yes. Amaya region. Yep. You know, yep. he was uh, outstanding, don't get me wrong, all, week, all day. But he was getting faster from qualifying to race. Then the sec uh, second qualifying session to the race still going faster. And then again, we had the Azure circuit twice. And he just continued to get faster. So we're seeing a couple of drivers in behind here who need to take a leaf out of his book here and just continue to progress and not maybe look at operator as a target at this point because it's especially in qualifying but maybe target him in the race well one thing i'm just so impressed with is it feels like wiggins doing that in reverse the fastest lap pops up immediately david moore now improving into fourth place you've got woodrow uh that's not still out on track that's looking 
He's done. He's done. Yeah, that's uh, that's not looking race speed. We've got Riley here trying. Is he going to try and go for pole position from here? He's definitely secured P2 unless something absolutely magical comes in from the bottom half of the field. Well, he's certainly not waiting for a bus, John, so I reckon he might be going for it up towards the final couple of corners we go. And can he potentially upset the apple cart here then? We've got two corners to go. And I'll tell you what, he is on the limit. One, one corner to go, gets the car sideways, and that oh. is... It looks, it looks classy, it looks amazing, but it's not fast. Ultimately, that is qualifying over for him. He will start in the front row. And I was talking about operator not improving from the start of a qualifying oh session. Oh my God. And then there you go, goes and proves me wrong, shows what I know, absolutely wow. nothing. Unbelievable stuff, a 141.061 at the dying seconds of that session means that Christian Wiggins, ladies and gentlemen, for the second race in a row, will start from pole position and an almost full half a second behind him, but equally on the front row, Erie Riley. So the run down to turn number one and whether they can get side by side is going to be absolutely pivotal in determining the outcome of this race. Behind them, we've got Todd Aitchinson, David Moore, Ryan Woodrow and Matteo Scaptura. Oh, I really, really want to see fights between those three. I think it's going to be fantastic during the race. Matt Hugenschmidt is in seventh. We then have Max Bowman behind him and on the fifth row of the grid we've got Savesh Han after that beautiful podium in race number one we'll see if he can make his way through the field alongside Mike Lawson so that is qualifying now done uh, are there any names there Luke that you think might be a little bit out of position or you're maybe looking to see them gain a couple of places in the opening laps uh you could fit yeah, uh, I, I feel like he's still living off that mistake in race number one, the, the incident in race number one, uh, and he's just not being able to regain from it. He needs to regain. He needs to regain really, really fast. Uh, he's not got long to do it. It's race two of three. You know, it's uh, maybe going to be a tough ask for him to maybe challenge for the championship, but, you know, considering what he potentially could have done in race one, needs a better showing from him for me. And then we have uh, drivers who are really, really giving it 100% in terms of effort, even when the chips are down, like Woodrow. Uh, excellent recovery drive, but you do sort of reach that territory where you don't just have to do well, you have to also hope that a little bit of bad luck happens to other drivers as well. He's probably looking to place maybe, are we thinking like a top three, top four finish to sort of stay within uh, the boundaries of actually if there's a DNF here, I can come in and steal the title. What are their objectives after the initial recovery drive? Uh, P1. P1. Wood Woodrow, after that unbelievable performance, uh, it's so understated how well he's done to get a sixth position in race number one from where he was. He's got to be going for P1 here again. Let's see. Here we go. It is race time then. It is race two then of the Logitech McLaren G Challenge. And we've got a false start then. Erie Riley's done a false start here. So that will be a drive through penalty. And again, wow, that's a big, big mistake. He was going to drop to the back of the grid order here. And we've not seen that so far this season. And that's given Operator a free run here into towards turn number one. No mistakes here. And he's going to be out in the lead of this race. As we see then in P2, it's Aitchinson who's under all sorts of pressure here from David Moore. We can check it out from his cockpit view here. And you can see again that wall does does close up, you've got to be so careful, and he's now had to let off the gas. I told you, John, if you don't go through there flat out, you're going to lose so much time. Yep. And now he might be under pressure here from Woodrow. Woodrow has to get these moves done early. He is close, up towards that bus stop chicane, and he's not quite close enough there. And actually, uh, maybe being a bit more reserved, so David Moore makes a mistake, and it's going to be P3 for him. We've got a driver off here as well in the background. That is going to be uh, Scaptura. He's going to get a slowdown penalty for sure. Woodrow makes it up to P3 here, but it is indeed Christian Wiggins in P1. But Todd Aitchinson taking full of advantage here. He is qualified P2 and can he take the challenge to our race leader? Well, and once again, I feel like this might be a very similar story to race number one where, oh no, a big big spin towards the back of the track there. Who is that? Savage that's Hand. The, that's Savage Hand but, and David Moore's in 10th? Yeah, David Moore's down. He made a mistake in the bus stop chicane. He's let everyone go through. He had the penalty as well. Uh, and it's just going really badly here for Savage Han and David Moore. And remember, those two were on the podium there in race number one. Wow. So this, this is huge for Operator right now. Absolutely massive. Look at this. Evan Quinn then battling with Z1 and only uh, Mike Lawson. So Mike Lawson from 10th on the grid up to 8th position. And wow, look at him now chasing down as Riley again is in P7. But he will. He's, he will have a drive through penalty here. He doesn't have to take it early. He can take it right at the end of the race, to be honest with you. Uh, it just this will show how much experience he has within the game. Well, is he coming in early to get this uh, pit stop done? He's not. So he's going to stay out. And that's using his experience here. That's for sure. Uh, look at this. We've got Matt Hugenschmidt, who is making advances here in this race. He's gained one position as it stands he is in behind Bowman we have then got Scaptura in uh, fourth position but the front three are so spaced out already here Woodrow is in P3 uh, again Todd Aitchinson is in P2 and then we have got Christian Wiggins in P1 uh, but again none of his rivals are anywhere near him this is just a gift absolute gift for him 
Aitchison and Woodrow definitely the main beneficiaries of that, but uh, that's assuming that uh, Christian Wiggins was even in the same postcode as anybody else, because once again, at the end of lap one, already building up more than a one second advantage. Hugo Schmidt, big mistake there, runs wide, as you can see, he's actually not on camera anymore, he's down to P10 as he hit the wall. Yeah, he did not recover through the bus stop there, and oh, it's going from bad to worse then for Hugo Schmidt. And after what happened in race number one, he just hasn't regained at all here. Well, I'm wondering whether this might be his first eSports event, uh, and he's maybe not got that experience of when things go wrong. And this is something, again, you know, he can come back next year, he can lean on this for sure. And there's a car facing the wrong way there as well. Who was that? That was, oh no! So Riley's not only got himself a drive-through penalty for a false start, he's now made a mistake here where he's just, oh, it looked like he's a, a classic on the power too early, he spins the car around, oversteer into the wall. Uh, we didn't actually see what happened, but it just the way it's played out definitely gives that impression here. And again, anyone that's trying to challenge uh, the front drivers here just keeps making a mistake. When it rains, it pours, Luke, and uh, unbelievable here. Once again, everything nice and clear up front, and absolutely anything you can think of seems to be going on behind him. Christian Wiggins uh, in a world of his own right now, but that said, 11 minutes left remaining in this race, and we've seen how easy it is for a driver to go sideways and hit a wall. That can happen to someone as quick as Christian Wiggins as well. So you mustn't pop the pun, let your foot off the gas or anything like that. A single moment of lap concentration, and that potential 10 points could become zero very quickly. Yeah, there's uh, oversteer, walls. They don't care about your reputation. They will take you apart if you make a mistake here. Woodrow has got a, a slight penalty here. He always say a slight penalty, it's two seconds. That's gonna drop him down into fifth position. So right now, Scaptura on net time alone is gonna be into P3 here on the podium. And we look at the front two here, let's give Todd Aitchinson uh, a little bit of credit here. He's only two seconds behind. Well, I know we're only five minutes into the race here, but to be lapping in the 42 fours, he's only eight tenths off of Christian Wiggins. And we know that Christian is just a sensational talent. He's doing a really good job here. Again, if race one went a little bit better, could be looking at him potentially upsetting the Apple car, but not quite able to. But again, yep. this is a really good performance from him so far. Max Bauman's doing pretty well as well because uh, we've got the uh, current lap times about three tenths ahead of Scaptura. And uh, if Woodrow falls behind him, either due to that time penalty or otherwise, I think uh, Max Bauman here really is uh, fighting for a podium position. Yeah, could be, absolutely, with that penalty. But again, he's got to get ahead of Scaptura. So Scaptura just got to make that McLaren as wide as possible. Get a little bit uh, further back then. Evan Quinn is in behind Z1 and only. And it's Mike Lawson. He's moved up three positions now here. So really is putting a very good showing into race number two. Hold on, David Moore's up to P6 then. So he was down to P10 at one point. Wow, so where did that come from? Great recovery. The, the problem with recovery drives if you're uh, if you're trying to chase down a championship, Luke, is that they're recovery drives. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> absolutely fantastic stuff to see David Moore potentially get back up into the top five and maybe even beyond, considering where he was at the end of lap one. This is very impressive. I'll tell you what, you should become a private investigator. You are right? gobbling up these clues and figuring this stuff out for sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Moore, the big factor for him here is there's a penalty ahead in P3, and then you've got this battle here for P4. So if those two start mixing it with each other here, there's an opportunity for David Moore to close up potentially grab a top five and again going by the first result he did get p2 and it would take something astronomical for christian wiggins to now potentially lose this i feel like it's at that position i'm not going to treat the audience like they're stupid at this point but david moore might be looking at the second position in this championship and he needs to maximize the points in this race uh, again with Savage ham being 10th position it's a bit yeah. of a gift as much as it's been a bad race for moore it's a bit of a gift for him as well there is actually the potential, depending on how the race pans out, if um, if Christian Wiggins wins this race, depending on how results go elsewhere, he could legitimately be 10 points ahead going into the final race, which would be absurd. Yeah, the way, obviously everything is possible within any points format, but with the points format we're using here, that's just such a small chance of that happening, and ultimately here we are. You know, Watkins Glen right. has taken some prisoners, that's for sure, and the one driver that is not taking a prisoner off, and we're gonna have to give him some camera time at some point. Can't pretend like he's not in the championship, because he is out in front here, and uh, if anything, he's extending there. I'll tell you one to watch out for, it, again, it's a two second penalty he's got, but Woodrow is absolutely flying now in P3. Uh, Woodrow needs to get a wiggle on as well, because if Woodrow wants to finish ahead of Scaptura and Bowman, who are both doing a pretty good job right behind. Uh, I think it's Bowman that he has to be a little bit more worried about because Bowman, for the second lap in a row, has posted a lap time that's three tenths of a second faster than Scaptura, so he is absolutely reeling him in. So Woodrow wants to be more than two seconds ahead of this fight. Very, very important there. Max must be listening because he's tried to make you look a little bit silly because he's just done half a second slower. 
Oh, I wish he was a bit quicker. Come quick. on, yeah. Max. Oh, what's he doing? Come on, Max. Uh, I wish he was going a little bit faster than to, to really put this battle on. Uh, but the only one this is really going to suit then is David Moore. But Moore, I'm not too sure whether he's been in any trouble in terms of, like, hitting a barrier or anything. Like, So I feel like he won't have any damage, so he can maximize his time. Looking at his lap times here, a 43-0. It's not going to be enough for David Moore to really close up to the back of these. Uh, so he needs to find a little bit more. Um, the race leader here, again, well, three seconds clear and just putting on an absolute smoke show of a performance. I, I tell you what, if, um, if he's gone from 10th to 6th while hitting barriers, then he clearly needs to hit a couple more because he's doing a fantastic job so far uh, this race. It's unfortunate the way it started, but I think uh, a very calm, very measured recovery drive here from Moore. Still a half the race left to go, though, so we shouldn't count any chickens before they hatch. Uh, out in front, then, this is lap number 5, and THR operator Christian Wiggins is in the lead of the race by just shy of 3.5 seconds. I have some good news uh, for the people at home going, Going, actually, is this going to be a repeat of race one? No, he's not a second ahead of everyone else. He's only half a second ahead of everyone else. So there you go. That's the difference so far. Yeah, and that's not to say that the drivers behind him are anything other, you know, they're not average. These drivers are unbelievable. No, these are the quickest. Yeah, they've, they've, they've got here. They've managed to get to this uh, position in the championship, to get to this championship regional final. No one can ever take that away from them. That's something they can lean on in the future. And again, for all of you watching at home, the future, next year. Get yourselves involved. Go to logitechgchallenge.com. Sign up for the news there. You'll get all the information first, and maybe you will be the next Christian Wiggins, but maybe with a different name. Maybe you are Christian Wiggins as well. Who knows? Maybe there's loads of Christian Wiggins out there. It's like, I don't know, like the minority report, they're everywhere. <laughs> Can you imagine uh, 11 of them on track right now would be nope. a little bit insane. Also, they can't. They're basically going to be occupying the same piece of tarmac as well with how consistent they have been. Uh, but the battle on track we're watching right now, Max Bowman, is all over the tailpipe, practically puffing the tailpipe of Scaptura right now. And the question then becomes one of racecraft. How easily does Scaptura soak up the pressure and will Max be able to pressure them into a mistake and take that fourth position and start to hunt down Woodrow in third. Yeah, this is the only one this is really going to benefit at this point is David Moore in sixth, but he's too far behind. He's four seconds, just shy of four seconds off the pace. Uh, Woodrow, this is actually going to benefit him, actually, in all fairness, because if these two do start battling for position, as it stands right now, they're both going to go up a spot. Yeah. So if they start battling, they could both cost each other that spot. So it's, uh, yeah, double-edged sword for them right now. And uh, again, you know, You've made it to the uh, Logitech McLaren G Challenge Regional Finals. You're not holding it back, are you, right? No. You, oh, yeah, maybe we could just stay within two seconds of some of a penalty, or we could put on a hell of a show. And I think we're going to go for the hell of a show option, that is for sure. So Max Bowman is closing in then on Scaptura. And let's check it out from his cockpit cam as well. From, from a lap time point of view, Bowman has got the pace in him, as we just see the car in front. Scaptura run a little bit wide there. He's got the raw pace to catch third on track. Bit of a mistake there, actually, from Scaptura in front. He went on the brakes a little bit early and actually recovered quite nicely, uh, in all fairness. It's a very minimal mistake as we head then down in towards turn number one. And you can see here that Max is on the brakes so much later here, but again, he's just not able to get on the power early enough. Now we're going to get the roller coaster that is turns two, three, and, well, I guess turn three is one of those corners where it deserves to be two corners. Uh, so there we go, I'm going to say this is turn four. Uh, along this back straight here, and he's just not close enough again. It's so difficult with the turbulent air to maximize your time, especially with all of the undulation through sector number one, to then try and get a run towards the bus stop chicane. But it's your best opportunity, really, uh, that and turn number one itself. But although turn number one isn't the slowest of corners as well. So yeah, it is the bus stop chicane really where you're going to get your maximum uh, in terms of overtaking opportunities. But right now, Scaptura is doing enough. And if anything, Woodrow is slowing down here. So these two are still within that two second mark and that will gain them one spot each. Woodrow really needs to try and get ahead of this fight. But uh, at the moment, uh, if anything, they're reeling him in very slowly, only a second and a bit ahead. So a very tricky situation, I have to say, for Woodrow. Needs to find a little bit of pace. A 143-0 coming up from Bowman on that last lap. Uh, just a, a tenth and a bit faster than Scaptura, but it's finding a way past, like you said, Luke, that is absolutely going to be the critical point here. And so far, Scaptura has been soaking up the pressure well. A minor mistake or two, but nothing that's left the door open. No, absolutely not here. And uh, that 
shows great prowess, to be fair. Uh, again, there's going to be a lot of nerves being, going around. This is going to be the first major event for a lot of these drivers as well. Um, so, yeah, fantastic to see that these drivers are dealing with the pressure pretty well. Uh, again, talking about Z1 and only Mike Lawson, then seventh position. We're on board with Evan Quinn, who's just in behind him here underneath that rear wing. But, yeah, Mike Lawson's gained three positions in this race so far. Qualified in 10th, and it just goes to show that qualifying is not everything. It is all about maximizing the race. That's where you earn the points. Let's go a little bit further back here and see how close then it is between Savesh Han and indeed Eri Riley. And unfortunately, we've actually lost the driver here as well. So we're going to go back on board then with the battle for P4. It is indeed Bowman versus, uh, who are we versing here in P3? It is uh, Matteo Scaptura, of course, Cone Dodger. No cones to dodge on this circuit as it stands. And as you said, he's recovered really well here. He's under a lot of pressure. He obviously made a mistake for Max to have uh, caught up like he did. But as soon as he's been put under, under any sort of pressure, he's responded really well. He has indeed. And uh, we, we, we saw in race number one, uh, several of these drivers, they responded under pressure, but they were still making those mistakes, Luke. So uh, the fact that Scaptura has been able to do this is really good. And it's unfortunate because we were talking about his possible chances in this race. I think it's Hugen Schmidt that we've actually lost from the race as well, uh, which is really frustrating because we were actually picking up um, his racecraft prior to coming in here. But never mind, we've still got a coat to go. Yeah, poor Hugo Schmidt. You know, when he woke up this morning, he would have thought it was going to go a lot better than it did today. But again, there's a lot of things that you can take from this. Of course, you enter these championships. You want to win them, John. Yes. You want to win them. That's the, op you know, the objective. But you never learn to get better unless you make mistakes. You never learn to get better unless you're beaten because you're always learning. So you've got to learn from those mistakes, you know, when they happen, and then you've got to... Well, this must be a boring day at school for Wiggins then. Yeah, absolutely. There's the guy's learning nothing today. Um, yeah, <laughs> again, yeah, it just goes full circle to Christian Wiggins. He's learning absolutely zero right now. And guess what? Again, he does not care. No, absolutely not. Uh, lap nine now and six seconds ahead. So not pulling away at a second a lap or anything like oh, that. Late oh, late move potentially there and oh, nearly. The door was open. That was so close. Yeah, if he, if he tried to uh, make that happen there, that would have been them two game over for sure. So uh, fair play to Max there. He had a little bit more in the brakes than, uh, than I anticipated. I thought he was full 100% lock there, game over. Uh, but fair play to him. He backed out there. And well, is that going to force a mistake then from uh, Scaptura though? Because Scaptura knows now that Max has got, got him on the under braking for sure if they get really really close then he's got that opportunity for himself i like the fact by the way that uh, bowman did that because uh, quite clearly just hanging around half a second behind three tenths behind wasn't forcing scaptura into a mistake so what do you do instead you poke your car out a little bit get in front of get in front get behind the rear view mirror really start filling up the screen and say to the driver in front look i'm here you have to focus on me you have to change your line or i'm going to come barreling up the inside when you least expect it and uh, oh there it is there it is, there's a potential move, and there is multiple lines through there. Oh, that is clean. There's Lovely. a whistle. Where's that come from? That's not an overtaken opportunity. Scaptura makes the smallest of errors. And well, Max Bowman says, thank you very much. I'll have that. Scaptura trying to bite back here, not able to do so. And that is a delicious move there, a scrumptious move. I'm, I'm very happy because normally cast a curse is uh, you, you say something and then they go off the track. I feel like the opposite has finally happened here for me. Let's see if he can keep the position. Woodrow, two-second penalty. This is perfect for him. He's now two seconds in advance of these two drivers as it stands. Yes, he is. And actually, Scaptura's got a penalty here as well. So actually, maybe that was a penalty that came into play there. I'm going to tell oh, you wow. now, that was a great overtake for me. It's a mistake there from Scaptura. Now he's under all sorts of pressure and more. Moore's three seconds away here, but the race is over here as Operator has crossed the line. We got carried away. I got too excited. Didn't realize that was the last lap, but it is <laughs> indeed Christian Wiggins that picks up the dub there. And I'll tell you what, wow. it is Todd Aitchinson, who didn't really have much camera time at all there, just went into second position, a little bit like David Moore in race number one. But I'll tell you what, the big winner out of that situation really, apart from, of course, Christian Wiggins, because he's got two wins from two, uh, is Ryan Woodrow, yes, because he was going to be fifth position until that last lap happened. That overtake happened from Max Bowman, and it's cost him both positions. So Max has made an overtake, but he's gained nothing from it. Weirdly, oh, it's strange, so, isn't it? So Bowman's position had to be: I need to get this overtake done. Once I get the overtake done, what do I gain out of it? And he didn't really have time to even have that thought before the race was over. Fantastic overtaking move, though. Definitely move of the race as far as I could see. Uh, so these are your provisional results for race number two in Watkins Glen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, THR operator Christian Wiggins will take home the provisional victory there, and that would be two wins from two. Todd Aitchinson, take nothing away from that. A relatively chill drive in second place, but some good points on the board. Ryan Woodrow, I believe, will be the final podium position, just about squeezing ahead of Max Bowman, despite having that two-second penalty. 
penalty. Matteo Scaptura will then be behind him, and we've got David Moore and Mike Lawson, sixth and seventh, respectively. Rounding up the top ten, we have Evan Quinn, Savez Khan, and Erie Riley, who oh, was so, so promising in the in the first stages of the race, and I'm very, very sad that uh, we haven't actually seen the full potential of what Riley can deliver. I'm really hoping we see big things from him in race number three. I love the fact that he was uh, had showed that potential, as you say, at the start of the race when he actually had a, um, a false start. But yes, yeah, not uh, In qualifying, if, I fair, mean, in qualifying, it was fantastic. He did go across the start finish line first, so there yes. was a big potential <laughs> there for sure. Yes. <laughs> it didn't work out too oh, well Oh, man. I, it's, it's just such a shame. When you get to that position, you fight so hard, and it really is. After race number one, where Operator just blitzed the field, being on the front row of the grid must have been fantastic for him there. And then that false start, and it was just one thing into another, a nightmare race, something to put out of your mind and say, don't even worry about it now. Focus on the next race. Absolutely, but ultimately, look at these competitions and we're going to get to the stage where some drivers aren't going to be in the running for winning it anymore that's just the nature of competition but it's Absolutely. all about what can you take away from this what can you learn for the next time you're given this opportunity if you're given that opportunity you never know but ultimately we're at the position now i think i've used the word ultimately about four million times by the way i'm fully aware of it i apologize but yeah it, it's now about figuring out what you can gain from it uh, moving forward in your sim racing career you know a lot of these drivers are, are young guns coming through a lot of these drivers are also a little bit older as well maybe it might be their last opportunity of racing at this level. So this final race, oh wow, there are gonna be some fireworks for sure. So we'll wait and see whether we get another splendiferous performance from Christian Wiggins in race number three, but we shan't get ahead of ourselves. Anything can happen. Again, a massive thank you to our PC and display partners, Alienware, on whom the uh, Alienware 38 curved gaming monitor is exactly what all of our competitors today are racing on. Thank you very much for that. And thank you for providing a deliciously excellent level playing field for this wonderful competition. We're going to a quick break while we finalize those provisional results. And when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, it's the circuit of the Americas.
Welcome back to the Logitech McLaren G Challenge, ladies and gentlemen. We are now through two out of three races, and there's no denying it, Christian Wiggins is stamping his authority all over this championship. But it is not over yet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the standings now after the results for race number two have been finalized. Here they are behind me, but let's give you a closer view. Christian Wiggins currently 20 points. Absolutely perfect performance so far. And David Moore on 11. Now, admittedly, that is a mammoth gap. But more importantly, it means that Wiggins cannot take his foot off that Loud pedal, as you call it, Luke, because there is a possibility that David sneaks in past him. A full 10 points, of course, on offer to win the final race in Circuit of the Americas. Obviously, Christian is unlikely to let that happen, but it just goes to show you can't get complacent. Absolutely, but also six points between the top eight. So you've got David Moore, Scaptura, Woodrow, Aitchison, Bowman. You've got Han and Quinn as well. And there's three yes. trophies. There's P2 and P3 in the offering as well. It's not all about P1. So they'll be point. all vying for their trophy as well. That's a really, really good point. Literally any of our top eight could leap into second position by the end of this race. So it's going to be all to play for as well there. And uh, Christian, of course, has got it. I, I think it's fair to say this is close to all but wrapped up. But you do need to have a solid final race to guarantee that you're going to get that championship. So all eyes on Christian Wiggins and whether he can do that. And David Moore will, of course, be ready to pounce if that ends up happening. Now, just a reminder, just ahead of race number three, uh, all of our competitors are going to be using identical equipment for all of these races. They're on the Logitech Stream Cam, and they've got, of course, the Pro X Wireless headset for a keyboard and mouse. They've got the G915 TKL in addition to the Pro Wireless, and naturally, being a racing sim, the Logitech G923 wheel and pedals as well. And they're going to be doing this all on the Alienware Aurora R9, coupled with the absolutely delightful 38 curved gaming monitor, uh, which I'm sure looks superb and feels every bit as good as it looks. And they'll be doing all of this from the wonderfully comfortable confines of the Play Seat Sensation. Yep, yeah, well, we've seen all of that information about what they're driving on, but next is the track. And well, he may not be as curvaceous as me, but he's much more of an expert of Cota, and that is Lana Norris with a track guide of Circuit of the North America. Up next is Cota. So here are three things you need to know. Point one, built on man-made land, over the years the track has warped and become very bumpy, but some parts have also been resurfaced and made smoother. This can cause a difference in grip levels throughout the lap. Point two, with a very, very long back straight into turn 12, and also a decent run up to turn one, these are your two best opportunities to overtake. Especially turn one, thanks to a very wide racetrack where you can see some big dives for position. Point three, sector one here in Kota is incredible. With an essence of Magus and Beckett's like in Silverstone, one wrong move or mistake can lose you a lot of time and maybe several positions in the race. Fast and flowing, tricky and bumpy. Kota will be a real test for the drivers. And here we are in qualifying for the circuit of the Americas. We've got uh, Oh, it appears we've got 10 drivers in the lobby, so we, we've lost someone early on. I'll slowly try and work out who that is, but uh, qualifying, would you say qualifying is reasonably important here uh, compared to the other tracks that we've had so far? Yeah, absolutely huge. Sector 1 is the most technical sector we're going to see today. It is just relentless. If you make a, a mistake, it's Evan Riley, by the way, that's uh, not, uh, not involved in oh, this race. Oh, what a shame. Yeah, it is a bit huge Crying shame there. It's, um, yeah, again, there's a lot to be learned from uh, from just getting experience at this level. So hopefully uh, he's able to join the session in the coming minutes, but we'll see. But yeah, again, sector number one here. And actually, we should check it out from someone a little bit further back here, potentially. Here we go. Sector number one is just relentless here. You make one mistake through the first part of the second, uh, this sector, sorry, then you're going to make a mistake through three, four, five corners here. And as you can see just ahead there, the white McLaren wow. making that mistake. Uh, but it's just such a tough technical circuit. But it's got the longest straight that we're going to see today, even longer than Indianapolis, believe it or not. This is like uh, this is like America's answer to Maggots and Beckett's because it really is that kind of thing where you make a mistake early on in a sequence of corners and guess what? You're losing time, not just there, but basically for the foreseeable future as well. Oh yeah, I'm going to upset Wild 
Melbourne right now, and I do not like this place whatsoever. No? I, no, there's no, okay. flow, there's no flow to it for me, personally. Uh, and that says more about my sim racing ability than anything else, uh, if I'm completely honest. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I'm just not a fan. I'd love to go there. I think it looks amazing. And like it's one of uh, one of only 11 uh, first-class motorsport venues in the world, actually. Right. Uh, grade one. So yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic place. We'll go there with a picnic, camp out on you know one, one of the hills. Just watch all the yeah, cars go sure. by, not have to drive it ourselves, just enjoy. Yeah, I'll, do you know what? For a change, the next motorsport event I go to, I, I won't drive. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just watch. Okay. Um, but, Fair. you know, you hear from Lando, it's one of his favorite circuits, and he's a little bit more equipped to uh, to indeed give an opinion on the race circuit, that is for certain. Yeah, he's got he's got a couple of credentials up his sleeve, from what I've heard. Yes, absolutely. He's, um, yeah, he's quite experienced these days for such a young man. Uh, but again, it, we just have that big, long straight, and then you've got this double left-hander, and it just, there's just no real flow to the circuit here. This is the uh, infamous corner where Max Verstappen actually lost a podium by making an overtake underneath uh, the inside of Kimi Raikkonen by going onto basically the grass uh, there into that right-hander. Uh, but yeah, we're watching Todd Asherson here. And I tell you what, this is the right car to go on board with here because he has had moment after moment here trying to figure it out. And again, for me, that's also why I dislike the circuit is because it is like a puzzle. It's trying to figure out a puzzle the whole way around. But ultimately, as long as the drivers like it, it doesn't matter. Uh, and it's... Um it's one of those puzzles where you, you actually saw a little bit um, on board with Aegis in there, where you're constantly trying to test the limits of the grip. You could very clearly see that from the cockpit cam. So a lot of circuits you might be going, as long as I nail the line through this corner, I get my entry speed right, everything else kind of slots into place. And in sections of this circuit, it feels like the drivers are constantly reevaluating where that bite point, where that grip level is, all the way through the corner, and you can't, you can't let your concentration lapse even for a fraction of a second. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it stems from the fact that they all are running the same setup. They're on default setup, so they've not been able to change downforce, any tire pressures or anything like that. So it, they, they, they really are um, not up against it, but ultimately it's going to be a little bit tougher uh, than them having their own setup, for instance. So sure. it's a level playing field, um, which is, for me, the most important thing. Um, but yeah, we're on board with Woodrow here. And he, you know, after race number one, it was him regaining. Race number two, he was sensational. It's race number three where he really announces himself. Of course, it's too late for him to go out and win this competition, but a chance here to, to have his name on everybody's lips when this is all done and dusted. Well, I feel like, to, to be blunt, I feel like he's already done that. And uh, the only thing he can really do is add a little bit of gloss and spit shine to that because he has been absolutely sublime uh, today so far. There's no, no other word for it. And uh, we'll, we'll wait and see whether David Moore potentially can catch him up. But more importantly, actually, in terms of the standings, there's still a massive fight between second place all the way down to eighth. It's no one can really like, oh, there are a few people that have to take their eye off the prize at this point. They're over 10 points adrift of the win. But you can improve your standings considerably by getting onto the podium here at the Circuit of the Americas. Yeah, for sure. And there's trophy for P1, P2 and P3. Like, right? having that on your mantelpiece is, is, is a great accolade. You know, just reaching this level, reaching this final. Again, like I keep saying, you can never have that taken away from you. Um, but ultimately, if you have a trophy to show for it, it's all the better. That is for certain. And that makes it, uh, yeah, make, makes it a little bit more um, weird to see that Riley isn't, hasn't shown up for the final race. But it is what it is. Uh, it's, oh, well, of course, it's Christian Wiggins then, who is on P1. and with A the, second ahead, obviously. He, with the nature of the circuit here, he should just about get two more laps in. Um, because it's just such a long circuit. Two minutes, three seconds a lap. Um, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question, Luke, that potentially is impossible to answer. Um, um, which is? With Christian Wiggins has consistently shown us that what he considers to be a banker lap, everyone else considers to be a lap time that they put in in the dying seconds of qualifying. How do you get yourself into such a mindset that the first lap out every single time is one that everyone else is envious of? It feels like most drivers are slowly getting faster and Christian just starts off at 99% and works backwards from there, if anything. And when I say backwards, it's like, it doesn't matter if he loses 10% of the lap time, he'd still be on pole. How does he do it? I'm going to be honest with you, John. If I could answer that question, I wouldn't be here babysitting you every week. Fair. Yeah, so Entirely fair. I, I don't know. I'm just, again, magic. We'd be out driving Watkins Glen. Serious analysis. It's <laughs> magic. Uh, yeah, he's just talented, you know, ultimately. Uh, he will be the driver that's put the most time in as well. Like, you know, he won't rest on his laurels. You saw in the VT introducing the drivers earlier, it's always about getting better. It's always about progressing. And I'm telling you now, he is not going to be happy. You know, he's, he may go out and win this by finishing in third in this race, but he won't be happy with that. Oh, he, he won't will want that. have to win. 
it a absolutely needs to be a statement now, I feel like, from Wiggins. Um, that, that's what he's out to prove at the moment. Obviously, you don't want to have a nightmare race because you do still need to finish in the points to win the championship. Let's not forget that. It is not written up yet. Uh, so Christian Wiggins still has to complete the race and has to finish in the points uh, to guarantee winning the championship. But uh, assuming he's able to do that, you're, you're right, Luke. The, the only position he's looking at right now is first. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and well, he is in first as it stands. He's P1, and then we've got Todd Aitchinson again in P2. Then we have got Woodrow, Ryan Woodrow in P3. David Moore then again, the oldest man in sim racing. He is in P4 here. Savesh Han then is in P5. And well, that could be a juicy little battle here as well. Those both being uh, near, the, well, near the top three. Uh, we've then got Mike Lawson, who's qualified the best he has so far today. He's in P6, qualified P10 in the previous race and managed to get up to seventh. So he's a bit like me, actually. When I used to uh, compete, my qualifying was, was okay, but my race pace was a lot better. And you see that with a lot of drivers here. And well, the fact that he's qualified in P6, says to me that there's a lot more in the tank in terms of his race pace. We've then got P7, uh, Skaptura, we've then got Max Bowman, and then in P9 is Hugen Schmidt, uh, and then we have got Evan Quinn, who's yet to put a lap time in here, and again, might be, might be worthwhile starting from the back here, actually, with the nature of this circuit. <laughs> um, but uh, it's now not a second anymore, so there we go. Aitchison has improved here. It's now six tenths of a second, but again, six tenths of a second off of his banker time. Christian Wiggins is an absolute monster two minute lap time six tenths of a second might be uh, a little bit less percentage wise than on some of the other circuits but let's not take anything away from Wiggins who has set a <laughs> you say we've set a banker he's going to take that home I don't see anyone getting close to it at the moment Aitchison not taking anything lying down constantly improving and will have one final lap to see if he can improve further but almost seven tenths is such a huge ask Luke where, where are drivers more likely to make up time where, where, where are we going to see it? Where, where are the lines getting optimized to squeeze that extra tenth or two? It's kind of one of those circuits where you can find loads of time everywhere. It's uh, right. you know, it's just cutting the right corners, really, finding the limits of the circuit. Uh, it, well, well, that's the, Not that one. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely the limit of the circuit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Off into the wall, there we go. So that's qualifying over for him, and it's going to be gutted actually because he's the only, the only really one who, who could maybe potentially challenge our whole problem original pole position sitter here. It's really struggling for words today. English language is just not my strength, apparently. Um, so got, it's all right. It's, you're not a commentator or anything. I wouldn't absolutely, worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly that. I don't know how I'm here. No, <laughs> no one else is available. Um, P3 then, Woodrow. So Woodrow with an opportunity here if he finds that four tenths of a second to potentially put himself up onto the front row. And for me, for outright pace, Woodrow is the only real one who could maybe attack Wiggins. Sure. The, and if he can get a really good start, get up the inside. And again, turn one's going to be really, really key here, John, because okay. there are so many different lines in turn one. So, for instance, if Wiggins is on pole position and he takes a very tight line in turn one, he's going to be so slow on the exit. Yep. But ultimately, if he doesn't defend it, someone could just shoot one up the inside. So expect to potentially see the little bit of shenanigans into turn one. That's good. It means that uh, potentially someone on P2 or P3 might be able to find a way to get a good start and maybe uh, get around, not necessarily on the inside, but on the outside as well. So potential here for turn one to be a major talking point. But uh, oh my god, he's only gone and improved his time. Wiggins, unbelievable. It was 2.036. We've gone, you know what, let's, let's put a 2.034 in just to sort of screw it in. Unbelievable, almost at the death there. Delightful time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's just, I don't run out of words at this point. You know, we saw this all last year. Uh, didn't quite work out for him in the world final, the global finals, but again, just showing that in North America, he is the man to beat. Sensational stuff once again and from Wiggins. and. I'm just unsure whether, well, it's definitely not going to be Woodrow's. Woodrow no. runs wide there. Uh, is David Moore on a flyer here as well? And doesn't, uh, is he on a flyer? Oh, yeah, he's coming around the final corner now, actually. Here we go then. So is Moore going to be able to improve, potentially get onto the front row? He needs to find seven, nearly eight tenths of a second if he is to do so. Come on. And across the line he will go. Is it good enough for an extra couple of positions? It's a long run down towards that line. And it's a quicker time, but it's not enough. So it's going to be fourth position and for David Moore. He'll be just hoping to not make a mistake on lap number one and just keep himself in the running. Anything can happen around here. And I want to do, I do want to mention track limits and slowdown penalties are going to be massive here. If you can keep your car without any penalties, you've got a big chance of winning these races. 
are they quite strictly enforced here as well, so that literally the moment you go an inch away, you're going to see a massive penalty applied, especially if you're in a race with someone else on track, of course. It's, the, it's more to do with the nature of the circuit in terms of you've got to use the curbs to maximize your time. Got if you're it. not using the yeah, curbs, yeah. you're going to be so, so slow compared to everyone else. Because the track's so wide, you've got to, again, make it the widest angle possible through every single corner. Sure. You've got to hit every apex by being on the curb. And if you, you know, high risk, high reward, you run the risk of getting a penalty that way. So uh, at the moment, we're just waiting for the last couple of cars to make their way back to the pits. Uh, once again, a sensational qualifying session for Christian Wiggins, really showing us why uh, he doesn't just deserve to be here. But uh, if we had a global finals this year, he would absolutely be all over that as well. Christian Wiggins, THR operator on pole position now. Todd Aitchinson not actually uh, lying down here and continuing to try and improve. The only driver within a second in qualifying will start alongside him on the front row. Ryan Woodrow and David Moore, third and fourth respectively. Remember, David Moore is looking to try and win this race and have Christian Wiggins finish outside of the points. Still an opportunity to potentially clinch the championship. Savesh Han improving into P5 compared to the previous race. And Matt Hugenschmidt will be alongside him in P6. Behind them, we've got Max Bowman and Mike Lawson, the one and only. And rounding out our 10 competitors here, we've got Matteo Scaptura and Evan Quinn. So yeah, there we go. It's evenly poised here then. We've got Christian Wiggins on pole position. Again, he's been so, so dominant today. Can he make it a hat-trick for not only him, but then also for Team Highlands Racing? Big, big opportunity for him. It's going to be so, so cool to see how well he does. And I, I want to say something about um, soaking up the pressure, like additional pressure that he's putting on himself as well, because pole position, fastest lap, race win, laps led, He's got them all, and he has to remember that none of those things matter right now. He just needs to be able to finish the race in the points. But of course, he's not going to be thinking like that. He wants the fastest lap. He wants to make sure he leads every lap of the race, and he wants to make sure he comes in with the race win as well. But that's potential additional pressure and additional opportunity to make a mistake. So you do need to balance that out. That said, I feel like he's done a great job of that so far, and I don't necessarily see him doing something catastrophic that uh, puts him into P10 or something like that. He seems a very, very cool head there in P1. Absolutely. Um, he's just got to go by turn one. Turn one is the first hurdle for him, really. Get yep. through there, unscathed, no worries. You're all golden for the next phase of this race. So here we go. The final race then of the Logitech McLaren G Challenge here at Kota, and it's a very good start then from our pole sitter. And actually, we've just seen in the background there that, who is that in P4? Looks like they've just got a jump start here as well. And it's, well, again, what about turn one? Is he gonna get through there nice and safely? He does indeed get through there. And that is the first hurdle then on his way to potentially grabbing another title. Woodrow then is in P2, and Moore's actually made the move then up into P3. We've got Savesh Han then in P4, followed him through. It's Aitchinson's now down to P5. So he's made a mistake here, but I think Han might be in trouble. It looked like he got uh, a little bit of a jump start again, like Riley did in race number two. But look at the side-by-side -side action here. Aitchinson trying to fight back, and it's so, so close. Look at the different lines they're taking through the first sector here, John. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's where you lose so much time. Uh, a lot of really fun racing on track. Loads and loads of different lines here, and as a result, a lot of on-track action. Uh, Eichensen, I think, is a couple of positions ahead of a big, big fight. That's Scaptura and Hugenschmidt uh, fighting it out at the moment for 6th and 7th right now. And it looks like uh, Bowman is actually going to be slotting down to P7, so Scaptura losing a position there too. Yeah, Aitchison did indeed uh, get through there. Looks like the cameraman's been on the whiskey. Uh, but yeah, he's uh, lost a position. But look at Savesh Han then, the longest straight there is down in towards this hairpin left-hander. You see that Aitchison hits that apex beautifully, but he's slow on the apex. Took a too acute angle through there, and Sarvesh Han is gonna make the move up then. Almost with a contact between them, side-by-side -side action then, in behind. Max Bowman trying to make a move here, and Scaptura makes a little bit of an error. Bowman not able to indeed take full advantage through the double left-hander here, and Scaptura goes through very defensively, but Max Bowman not able to take full advantage here. As we go up towards the leader, and it is Christian Wiggins. He's not made a mistake, he's not put a foot wrong, and he's done Done everything he needs to do here and now it's all about just keeping that car in the lead of this race just hitting corner after corner taking it lap after lap and he will have the clean sweep here Woodrow is going to be in second position as they come up towards then the start finish line bit of a mistake there bit of a snaking on the exit it is then David Moore in third position here no mistakes made from him gained a position here but it's Han and indeed Agenson who are having the hellacious battle between them they swap positions four times there on lap wow. number one incredible stuff there Hugen 
Schmidt then, who has put all of the bad stuff behind him here. He's in P6 now, so he's making his way forward then. And we've got a penalty though for Scapchero. Let's ch quickly check out exactly what it is. One second then for him. Max Bowman, who was not able to get ahead of him, uh, is in P8. We've then got Evan Quinn in P9, and then we've got Mike Lawson in P10. It is so close from everybody. Everybody's got through nice and cleanly, but I tell you what, the battle for P2 is really where it's heating up. It is indeed, and uh, Woodrow and Moore are now looking to try and battle for that position. Moore about eight-tenths of a second behind at the moment, but the uh, front three definitely gapping the rest of the field as it currently stands, so uh, Han in behind Moore. Uh, about a second and a half. But really, four through eight, this midfield, so many changes of position there in lap number one. And these guys aren't uh, aren't exactly fanning apart either. There's going to be plenty more opportunities in the coming laps. Yeah, absolutely. Again, this is uh, the key, key part of the circuit. You need to get a really good exit here just to be underneath that rear wing, get an extra bit of, of help almost to get up to your top speed. Uh, but you can see here that Evan Quinn's a little bit too far behind. Max Bowman then in P7, uh, just in behind Scapchura, he's got that one second penalty. And then we've got uh, Todd Aitchison just dropping off the pace ever so slightly. So it is the battle for P2 here. And again, we're talking about guarantees of positions right now. Of course, if Christian Wiggins goes out and wins this race, it'd be three from three. He would be our champion for sure. But David Moore, he needs to get P2. Just to, just to guarantee no one's ahead of him, he needs yes. P2 in this championship. So uh, what, what's on the line for David Moore at the moment, just to put things into context, if he's able to find Woodrow and he's able to pass Woodrow, that means that operator Christian Wiggins is one mistake away from handing the championship to David Moore. David Moore needs to be in that position to pick up the pieces if that mistake comes in. So, and uh, step one of that is getting P2 so he can forget about Christian Wiggins until he claims that space. And as a result, this battle for P2 is actually quite exciting. Yeah, absolutely here. Uh, and again, fun fact, if uh, Wiggins and David Moore were to finish first and second, they were the two representatives from North America last year in the global finals. Well, there you go. Which just goes to show that their consistency, their drive to still be at the top end, even though everyone's improved in the region, is still going strong. So at the moment, we are on lap number three. Christian Wiggins currently uh, 1.8 seconds ahead of the rest of the field. Behind him is Woodrow and uh, Moore. Very, very close now within a second of Woodrow and potentially looking to try and size him up in the coming laps. We then have Hahn in P4, a further two seconds back. Right behind him, though, very interestingly, uh, we've got Todd Aitchinson. And uh, I wonder if Todd's able to potentially fight his way onto the podium, because that's basically what he did in the previous race. It was a really good drive from him. Here we go. He has to get a good exit out of this hairpin. This is the opportunity. He's run a little bit deep there. Is he going to be able to work it out on the exit? He has. It's actually a very good exit here indeed. And now it's all about that slipstream then. Can Aitchison make that move for P4? Give us a show in this final race. Have that name on our lips, as this championship does indeed elapse later on. The table is not quite close enough here, and actually is very good drive from Zavesh Han, who's indeed covered it off nicely on the power early enough to indeed not lose that position. We go back on board then with the battle for P2. And wow, this is closing up nicely, John. It really is. And uh, these drivers aren't making massive lunges or anything like that. Obviously, the way with the, uh, the changes of direction on this circuit mean that if you get your line wrong in one place or you go side by side somewhere, you lose bucket loads of time, as you mentioned, Luke. So when you get that passing opportunity, you want it to be quick and you want it to be clean which means you have to get seriously up close and personal within a tenth or two in order to be able to do that while avoiding needing to go side by side into a corner. It's going to be tricky, but when one of these drivers does it, it's going to look great. Yeah, for sure. Christian Wiggins, by the way, it doesn't look like he's extending his lead here overly too much. I wonder whether he is indeed, like you said earlier, taking his foot off the gas. Um, potentially, he's actually done a 205.3, so he's actually slower than Woodrow as it stands. Is there a chink in the armor here? Is yeah. there the potential? for a potential battle for P1. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure the operator's just done his first three laps and gone, do you know what, let's get a little bit of a lead. Or maybe just a minor it. mistake, Yeah, maybe, maybe a mistake, but you know, he's been in this position before, he's been regional champion before, so yes. he's got a lot of experience to lean on. Well, the next lap will be telling. We'll see, uh, we'll see whether Wiggins responds and uh, comes back with an even faster lap. It could have just been a one-off error, but uh, otherwise still in P1 and still by a margin of over two seconds. So looking okay so far. And Agentson now potentially lining up a maneuver. Absolutely, Agentson is all over the back of Han. Like a bad rash here, can't get rid of him. 
as you come then down in towards the hairpin before that long jaunt down the what feels like 400 miles of straight and you can see then Aitchinson has gone out deep once again and that was definitely not on purpose so I mean getting up close and personal to someone is one thing but getting past them these guys are really showing is another trick altogether uh, really difficult to pick the right line and try and get a little more exit speed in the car in front especially when they know you're coming as well and uh, Savage Hound really showing a composed drive so far maybe not quite the outright pace to pull away from the car behind him but uh, doing absolutely everything in his power to stay where he is yeah taking full advantage of being on this grand stage you know this, this is an opportunity yeah just showing off your skills here, getting the best position you can in the final race. Obviously, they can't win the whole championship, but like I said, there's three trophies on offer. Also, they're going to be able to watch this back with their family. They're going to be able to watch this back with their friends and fans. Like, these people have fans at this point. And there's, again, it's something they can lean on in the future if they get this opportunity once again. For anyone watching at home, if you want to get yourselves involved in the Logitech McLaren G Challenge, then you need to go to logitechgchallenge.com, sign up for the newsletter. You will be the first people notified as to what is happening for next year. And I'm telling you now, whew, I am super excited for that one. Let's head oh. up then to P3. Well, you can see then it's eight tenths of a second between the two. The gap really hasn't closed up here. Woodrow doing a pretty good job of managing it. Yes, and uh, more there, faster by a couple of tenths, but I think we have our question answered about whether Christian Wiggins is uh, posting a slower average lap. I think it was just a bit of a one-off because he's back in the 205.0. So he's seven tenths on the rest of the field. And the gap now is stabilizing at over three seconds. So I think Wiggins has gone, oh, yeah, all right, that's fine. Not a problem. Let's get a wiggle on. And he's doing a tremendous job of that so far. Six minutes left in this race. Bowman very, very close then to indeed Scaptura. Not as close here as Aitchinson is in behind Savash Han. These two have been going hammer and tong from right to the lights and probably going to be to the flag as well through the left-hander again, down towards the hairpin, down towards the being long back straight, and Aitchinson again not able to really get close enough here, although this time it looks a little bit more in tune, and actually Savash Han makes a mistake on the exit there. You just saw that the car just sort of stuttered a little bit, and that's him just losing traction on the exit, but it's enough, although Aitchinson not able to really pile enough pressure on to make a move yeah. here. Again, the closest now is actually all of a sudden, David Moore and Woodrow, and it's three tenths of a second between the two, although there's a penalty. So Savesh Han now has got a penalty here, one second penalty, and that is not ideal. So right now, as it stands, an HSN who's in P5 is net P4. Scaptura's got a penalty as well, and that's also one second, and uh, Bowman is within a second of him, so that's going to be a change of position if they stay as is, and uh, such a pity for Savish Han, who has uh, done very, very well, I think, to hold that car's position and really try and stop uh, Agentson from getting beyond him. Sadly, that penalty is uh, going to just ruin his chance of a podium, I think, at this point. Yeah, very unfortunate there. But again, I think, uh, to be fair, Agentson and Savesh Han have ruined each other's chance of a podium here because they have been going at it from the start of this race. And hold on, what's going on here? Where's Agentson? Where's Han? Oh, Han's in the pits. So Han's in the pits here, ladies and gentlemen. I think, oh yeah, sorry, he, he, he did a false start. So he had to take ah, a drive-thru. Ah, so that was the drive-thru from yeah, earlier. That okay. makes sense, yes. I forgot there in my old age and all that. I was forgetting. Uh, so yeah, he has to serve a drive-thru. That's made it very easy then uh, for... To be fair, it's in the second half of the race, so uh, I can see why. Aitchison, but I think by my mathematics here, that puts Woodrow more guarantee for P2 and P3 in the championship, with Operator, of course, taking the championship as it stands. Woo and Moo in Woo! the standings at the top left of your screen. You gave me a heart attack there, I swear. <laughs> Doing tremendously well, second and third, no matter what happens. Of course, still four minutes of the race left to go. Uh, Moore still needs to overtake Woodrow. Very important there, because if he doesn't, then it doesn't actually matter if Wiggins makes a mistake. I think this is the battle for P2 right now. I think there was two points between them going into this race. Woodrow was behind by two points, was he not? Uh, yeah, David Moore has a second place. Does Woodrow have a second place? Well, he would do now. Uh, he would do. Yeah, I absolutely. don't know who wins that on count back then. Yeah. We'd have to go and take a look at the other results as well. You're right. Oh, God, we have to do mathematics. Poor Jared in the background. He's going to be doing all these maths. Oh, God, crazy stuff. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we'll have to figure that out as it happens. And, again, Moore looked really close, but that first sector's killed him a little bit here. And he's just not quite close enough, but... Again, it's a very difficult place to make an overtake again, apart from turn one, really. Uh, and again, the exit of the big long back straight. It's not really too many opportunities to make an overtake. You're kind of hoping for the driver in front to make a mistake. And Woodrow right now is not doing that. 
So there are only two possible laps left remaining for Moore. Now, what Moore has in his favor is that for pretty much the entire race, he's more or less been between two and three tenths on the car in front. He's got the outright pace. It's finding that overtaking opportunity. And we've seen multiple drivers at the front and in the midfield loop. Turns out it's a lot more difficult than it looks on this track. Oh, yes, it's very difficult. You know, just from us here who are commentators, it would be difficult. But yeah, being in the actual car uh, with the jet washed air as well, just bring that into um, the conversation. They're going to have the, the dirty air from the car in front. It's a wide circuit as well. So uh, it's just a, just a really tough place to make an overtake, uh, unfortunately. But it is what it is. It is a, a GP circuit. It is wide, so you'd think that they might have more of an opportunity. It's just not worked out here. But this is where you've got to be absolutely spotless. You've got to be through here like, as clean as a whistle. You've got to hope that the driver in front of you or the driver behind you makes a mistake. You've just got to concentrate on your own lines. Like I said, if you make a mistake through one corner here, you've made a mistake through the whole sector. Yes. And uh, Moore here really trying to be as clean as possible to get as close as possible to the car in front. Uh, There's a battle for P2 in the championship overall, as well as the second and third place positions on the podium as things currently stand. But it was actually Woodrow that managed to find two tenths on Moore through that sector of the lap. So maybe that's the reason we haven't been able to see Moore catch up. It's just uh, he's way too far behind, unfortunately, after that sequence of corners. Possibly a minor mistake there. I think he's only realistically got one more opportunity at this. Yeah, but you, you look at sector one, it's bad enough going through there on your own, let alone following someone that close. That's what I mean by the jet washed air effect. Like you just, you lose all, all sense of downfalls in the front of your car. So unfortunately, you're just almost guessing as to where the entry points are. You're almost guessing how to maximize your exit speed. Um, but yeah, as it stands here, David Moore just not able to really put enough pressure here on Woodrow. And all of a sudden, Aitchinson, yeah, he is six tenths of a second quicker than Moore on a previous lap. See, he did, if he wasn't behind Han for that long of time, you know, half the race to be fair, he potentially could have been really in this battle for a top three. 1.3 seconds behind overall, though, with 45 seconds left to go in the race. Uh, unfortunately, might be a bit much. You're going to be reliant on a mistake to actually make that happen. And uh, more there, just over half a second adrift of second place as well. All sorts of dramas here in race number three, at least in the midfield. But uh, one person who has completely ignored all of that and said, drama? What drama? Once again, Christian Wiggins. Lights to flag as things currently stand. 20 seconds left to go, so we are going to have to see Christian Wiggins effectively do a lap of honor here, but I really don't think he might. No, absolutely not. He just wants to... Be clean here, make no mistakes. You know, the last thing you want is to grab a bit too much curb, oversteer, understeer into a wall. You know, that's that's exactly what he's not wanting to do here. So again, like you said, he's taken, a, I think he's taken a bit off his lap times, even though he's nine tenths quicker than the second place right now, right. I still think he's taken something off. Like he is driving within himself I'd right like now. I'd like to point out that Christian Wigan is not the fastest wow. lap on the road at the moment. Aitchinson, coming in with a 205.020, who said Wiggins was the only driver who could do that. It's a pity we're seeing this on the last lap, but that is a blistering pace there from Todd Aitchinson. Yeah, and like, uh, it's one of those we said earlier on today, you know, there's going to be one driver that will get better and better and better as the as the championship goes on. It's been Todd. And Aitchinson will probably want three more races now. Yes. So, you know, he'll want the event to be next week. This is like a practice warm-up. Unfortunately, it's not. But again, this is something you can lean on in the future. You know, this is maybe the beginning for him. This is not, you know, the first opportunity he's ever had to be at this level. This is something he needs to build on, work for. Uh, and maybe we're going to see him again next year. Who knows? But he is very close, though, to Moore. And actually, if anything, he's closer to Moore than Moore is to Woodrow. So, yeah, very, very interesting indeed here. And actually, Moore makes a mistake. And now this is where Moore has to hold on. Because it, I think it's going to go to countback, but if, if uh, Aitchison gets the position here, then it really, really would throw the cat amongst the pigeons. And Moore has to hold on to P3 as it stands. The leader is indeed Christian Wiggins. But who is gold? Oh, there's a mistake. That's, that's it and done. So, yeah, Aitchison is pushing and pushing and pushing. You see he's on the limit. But I'll tell you what, someone who isn't on the limit right now, but he was on the limit earlier. It is this guy here, Christian Wiggins. And I'm telling you now, I'm going to call it. He is going to be the North America Logitech McLaren G Challenge regional winner. And that is going to be Christian Wiggins. What an unbelievable performance from him. It has been three races, not just this race, all three races. He has been the absolute standout qualifying and in the race. And he's done it a bit of a canter, if we're going to be completely honest, well within himself.
It really is. The uh, phenomenal result for Christian Wiggins. 30 points. Absolutely delightful stuff there. Woodrow will hold on for second place. And David Moore does actually hold on for third. He spent so much of that race looking forwards that on the last lap, you go, hang on a second. I have to look at my rearview mirrors. Now, what has gone on? Let's not take it away from Aitchinson, who did a phenomenal job to get to that point and post a 205.0 as well. Absolutely delicious. So these are your provisional race results, ladies and gentlemen. Christian Wiggins for the third race in a row on that beautiful 10 points, top step of the podium. We then have Ryan Woodrow in second place and David Moore in third. We're going to find out on count back who will potentially be taking that second place in the championship. We then have Todd Aitchinson, Max Bowman, a uh, relatively quiet race, but a really, really solid result there in P5. And then Matteo Scaptura will follow him in. Evan Quinn, Michael Lawson, Matt Hugenschmidt, and Savesh Han, unfortunately, after jumping the start and needing to serve that drive through penalty, will come into 10th place. Although I have to say, his pace was very promising early on. It's just a shame that we had to lose him in that way. So those are the results of the race. <sighs> All three races are now complete in the Logitech McLaren G Challenge North American All Finals. All, All 12. 12. Yeah, yes. This is it. It's over. That makes me sad. That really makes me sad. It's Santa what? Claus is coming soon, though, so I'm excited for that. That is very That's true. So yes. Good. Don't worry, guys. We've still got we've still got more good things to look forward to. Uh, of the three races we've had today, uh, obviously Christian Wiggins, a phenomenal performance in all three. But uh, let let's take a look back Indianapolis to start things off. All well and good at the front of the grid, but again, a lot of jostling behind, Luke. Ironically, it's strange because Christian Wiggins has been unbelievable today. Yes. But he doesn't have any highlights. How weird is that? Like, <laughs> that's how amazing he's been. He's not been near anybody. Uh, but yeah, we're you know, looking a little bit of action here just behind us. And it was hotly contested. You can see cones flying up in the air in the background. The mid-pack were really, I say, uh, let's say there's two stars of the show right now. Oh. Christian Wiggins and then, of course, the mid-pack. It was really, really good. We saw a couple of mistakes there. And we watch here, Hugen Schmidt there. Um, yeah, getting a little bit too close to the rear of the car in front, which was not ideal. Uh, and he never really recovered from that, did he? No, unfortunately not. We saw flashes of brilliance from Hugen Schmidt during the race. Some really cool overtakes, some great fast laps, but he wasn't quite able to string them together in such a way that allowed him to get really, really maximum points in a race. And that, that's what he was after. He's got all the individual components for some absolutely phenomenal racing. Just needs to string them together now. And then uh, Watkins Glen as well. Again, this is the Christian Wiggins highlight reel because we're taking yeah. a look at the start of the race. And after that, you're not going to see him again uh, because that another phenomenal performance run. We cannot take that away. But behind him once again in Watkins Glen, the midfield were fighting so ferociously, it was non-stop action the entire way through. Yeah, absolutely. And you just saw the end of Indianapolis where he was on his own. And then he's going through turn one on his own. He just started off in race two right. as he ended. Uh, and we're watching here, Erie Riley, who unfortunately didn't race in oh. race number three, which is a, a huge shame and, and something that hopefully he learns from moving forward here uh, as we're watching Max Bowman, who produced the overtake of the day for sure. Uh, as you can see just in behind us, well, it's not actually that corner, but we will see it in a little bit there. It's an unbelievable move. Just didn't think it was on. Uh, so again, just goes to show how strong the mid-pack were. Uh, a little bit of uh, onboard action here, though, with Max. And yeah, again, Christian was the, the main man, but Max put on a hell of a show. Uh, I think that's actually the story to take away from today because so many of the drivers had individual highlight moments, Luke. They were actually amazing. Bowman, Riley, Woodrow, Moore, all of these drivers had opportunities that uh, they were either taking advantage of a situation or pulled off an amazing overtake uh, or just held on with some amazing racecraft to force a mistake. Most of the field is in the highlight reel, even though one driver won all three races. And I think that goes to show the depth of the field, how strong everyone is, and how capable everyone is of producing some top-notch racing. Yeah, but that's why you bought the 11-second gap up at Indianapolis. Like, it wasn't really because everyone else was slow. It's because they all cost each other so much time sure, by yes. racing side by side. He didn't have that. He was just leading from the front and doing what he needed to do. But the rest of the field, they put on a hell of a show for us, but ultimately they cost each other the chance of, of challenging him. And then Circuit of the Americas as well. Uh, David Moore's opportunity, if he was able to get that second place, putting himself in a position, of course, where if Wiggins made a mistake, the championship was potentially his. Didn't quite work out that way in the end, but let's talk about that last lap. David Moore, looking forward for the entirety of the race and then going, hang on a second, there's someone behind me? Yeah, Agenton out of nowhere. Right? Ultimately, Savesh Han had a, a drive-through penalty for a false start, mm. which actually got him ahead of Agenton. So Agenton's going to be furious with that. Um, but you can take, of course, as long as you want to take your drive-through penalty. Savesh Han waited until halfway through the race and then Agenton was released. 
Oh, that was absolutely fantastic. So three races, three really exciting races, and uh, an absolutely commanding performance from Wiggins there. Let's not take that away from him, but a lot of action on the track as well. So that's all three races done. Let's get those provisional results finalized ahead of formally announcing our champion. Once again, a massive thank you to our PC and display partner, Alienware, uh, on whom the 38-inch curved gaming monitors are used by all of our competitors in all of the races that you watch today and indeed throughout the entirety of the Logitech McLaren G Challenge. But for the final time, we're going to a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere because when we come back, it's formal. It's the final results.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. What an incredible three races we've had this evening. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, where have you been? This is the Logitech McLaren G Challenge. Well, it's too late now. It's too late now. Can't ask them where they North been. American final. The three done. races are done. We now have confirmation of the result. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. In fact, spoiler alert, there behind me, Christian Wickens, unsurprisingly, in first place with 30 points. Three wins from three. An absolutely picture-perfect result for him. And... Uh, Really, an incredible way to end. Uh, but Ryan Woodrow in second place, tied with David Moore, but crucially winning on countback. That was so unbelievably tight. Literally, it couldn't be tighter, that race for second place. What, the United States Regional Final? The United States Regional wow. Final, exactly. USA have really <laughs> taken over. Fair play. Um, yeah, unbelievable. You know, Ryan Woodrow and David Moore were, were exceptional. Uh, you know, they were very consistent. What about Woodrow? If it could have gone a little bit better without that contact in race number one, it could have been a better day. But I just don't think anyone had anything on Christian today. Christian has just been so, so quick. Fair play to him. Completely right there. And uh, speaking of the champion himself, I believe we have him on the line. So uh, Christian Wiggins, the champion of the North American Regional Final. Uh, I, I'm tempted to say it's just good to see you again because you're almost getting used to being in this hey, position. What a phenomenal three races, Christian. Uh, well done. Tell me what you're going through right now. Oh, man. Uh, I knew the competition was going to be, like, stiff. So, like, I, you know, I practiced qualifying. And, like, as you guys probably noticed, qualifying was where I was dominant. So, you know, I just wanted to put my car with, between the top three or pole if I could every single race. And yeah. that's what I did. Well, first and foremost, congratulations, like uh, unbelievable achievement to not only be this year's champion, but this, you're the two time now. How does it feel? What did it two take? Two time, back to back. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what did it take for you to, uh, you know, come back here and just do it again? Uh, kind of felt like nostalgia almost, like kind of familiar. And Christian, the heading into the final race, you were on pole position three times. You had the fastest lap in the first two races as well. Do you put any additional pressure on yourself when you're in that position and you're the man to beat? Are you thinking, actually, I need to lead every lap. I need to go lights to flag. Or are you just thinking, actually, all I need to do is coax at home? What goes through your mind? And is there any additional pressure when you're under that? So uh, the first race after turn one, I think out of like turn three or four, I had like a seven tenth lead or something like that. And it was from there on, I was like, I'm not going to even try to do the fastest lap of the race. I'm just going to drive the race car. So that's what I did. Just drove the race car. Wasn't trying to, you know, just try to be consistent, not burn up the tires. And then kind of turn or race two was kind of the similar thing, you know, with the jump start. Um, yeah. You know, I was able to get a really big lead from the rip there. Um, and with that, you know, it was the same thing. Not no need to, you know, be a hero and you know try to do time trial laps or anything like that. Just sure. drive the race car consistently. And that was my uh, that was my strategy there. And uh, I, I think Luke, actually, credit to Luke for this one. He's touched on this a lot previously. Um, even though you won three races out of three, I think it's fair to say that this year's Logitech McLaren G Challenge has has had the closest fields ever. We're talking about how there were gaps between races last year that simply don't exist 100%. anymore. And yet you were still 100%. able to make it look easy at times because your performance was phenomenal. What have you noticed about your rivals coming into this year? A word on them. Honestly, uh, everyone's been improving. I've, you know, you know, with you know how things been this year. Everyone's, you know, been practicing a lot and everything, and you know had more time and all that. So like I, I've seen a lot of the sim racing community, you know, even like you know here in America, you know, grow and people are you know getting excited about it. Excellent. Well, gracious as a winner and an absolutely fantastic and worthy champion. Congratulations once again, Christian. Fantastic job, absolutely much. imperious performance, and we look forward to seeing you back here next time. Thank you. Brilliant. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was THR Operator, an absolutely wonderful champion. 30 points out of 30. Christian Wiggins taking home first place. Ryan Woodrow on count back in second, and David Moore in third. And if you thought this year's Logitech McLaren G Challenge was excellent, 
wait till you see next year. Plenty of reasons to be looking forward to 2021 at this point. I think we can all agree. But next year's Logitech G Challenge is absolutely going to be one of them. Thank you so much to everybody behind the scenes for all of the amazing hard work uh, that you've put in to make events like this possible, including the installation of this beautiful plexiglass screen, Luke, that we're not going to see until next year. Thank you so much to you for your fantastic commentary and your absolutely brilliant company. I really wish even a fraction of what you say off camera we're allowed to broadcast to the world and show everyone just how funny you are in person uh, off camera as well. It, it's been an absolute joy to do the last four weeks with you, mate. It's been, yeah, the feeling is quite mutual. Yeah, it's been really good, bouncing off each other uh, really, really nicely. Uh, and again, it's great that you just said thank you to everybody. Uh, I just want to just mention one person, uh, someone who's no, no longer involved with the G Challenge, but I want to mention Andreas. Uh, I know you're watching yes. at home, mate, so congratulations on, on what we have this year and what the foundations you've built for the G Challenge moving forward. But yeah, what an unbelievable four regional finals has been. It's been a long journey. It started a long time ago, uh, but it's been an absolute pleasure. So many people go into making events like this possible, especially when we are in unprecedented circumstances like we are here in 2020. Uh, we've seen some phenomenal racing despite the fact that the drivers aren't here in person. And we've also seen some fantastic storylines develop in every single region of the Logitech McLaren G Challenge. This year has been fantastic despite adversity, and we really look forward to seeing what next year is going to bring, which will be even bigger and even better. So make sure you sign up and watch out for those updates. Thank you so much to everyone for tuning in this evening, and indeed across the last month and the last six months of the competition. It's been an absolute pleasure to share these stories with you. Stay safe, be well, have a fantastic Christmas and New Year, and we'll see you next year. Good night.